official release of Minecraft! Years ago, there was a global phenomenon in the gaming community around Minecraft. This really started in mid-2011 and didn't really start to unwind itself until, you know, 2014, giving this one single game nearly three straight years of unrivaled attention from dozens of millions of players. There was a time in which you would get on YouTube and there were so many Minecraft YouTubers that you could not avoid them. They were the first major wave of YouTubers that came along and it's safe to say that at one point in the history of YouTube, most of the major creators were actually only making Minecraft content. But the glory days of both YouTube and Minecraft are now long gone, and most of us realize that they're not really connected events. YouTube has had its issues and the Minecraft community has had theirs. But what were these issues? Looking back on it, there were three major events throughout the course of the last five years since Minecraft peaked in popularity that have caused it to become a fraction of what it used to be. Throughout this video, we'll be talking about these things, going over a brief discussion of what happened and reminiscing more than anything. When I was younger and starting my YouTube channel in April 2012, I was absolutely infatuated with Minecraft. I was 12 years old, I was watching music parodies, hours of, you know, Minecraft Hunger Games, Let's Plays, hours of, you know, Hunger Games videos, Let's Plays. I mean, I played the game myself and made crappy commentary videos over the footage. I mean, there was no end to the game for me. Captain Sparkle, Sky Does Minecraft, Ant Venom and the Syndicate Project are the four main creators that when, you know, I remember back on it, I remember watching a lot of these guys. Now when you look at these channels, they're either non-existent like Sky Does Minecraft, dying out like Syndicate, or have entirely stagnated videos and, you know, overall channels like Ant Venom or Captain Sparkle. And this is not limited to just these four, I mean this entire Minecraft community has fallen apart over the last few years. And it's sad to see considering I used to idolize these guys and I wanted to be just like them and I was inspired to make content because of them and I've watched now two major communities that I was part of die over the last four years or so, Minecraft and Call of Duty. However, COD is starting to pick up steam again so even if I don't enjoy the most recent game, it could make a comeback if they continue to actually make the games worth playing. But there is really no saving Minecraft and even if I did care enough to want to be saving this game, it just could not be at this time. So this will start us off on the day that Minecraft took the first and probably biggest blow that the game itself could have taken. On September 25th, 2014, Microsoft bought the rights to Minecraft and Mojang Studios for two and a half billion dollars. Notch and other influential developers ended up leaving the studio to pursue other interests with their newfound money. People don't understand that when Notch and his guys were in control of the game, it had a culture around it and the game was super fun and enjoyable. After Microsoft bought it and it began to release pointless updates that didn't add to the fun of the game and instead just added more complexity to it hidden cleverly as new wonders to explore, it started to make the game mundane. There wasn't much reason to change over the course so much of the next few years, but Microsoft did just that. Many people mark this as the actual day that Minecraft began its downward spiral and I would certainly agree with that in regards to quality of the game and people actually just backing out of the game entirely. Most people do not realize that the quality of the games is what keeps the communities thriving. I mean, the, mo the more enjoyable the game actually is, the more people are going to talk about it, the more that it gets streamed, and the more that new players are going to pour in. Minecraft, barring some of the newer blocks and features, was just fine in 2013. All it could have really used were, you know, more blocks, more things that actually made sense, most of which could just be modded into the game. Instead, going back to the game now will just confuse anyone who has not played it in years. I hate to say this, but when a major company buys a game like this, usually that will lead to the game becoming so commercialized and watered down that the game dies, and Minecraft is a prime example of this. Even though the game had been significantly worse for, you know, nearly a year or two, the next point specifically destroys the Minecraft YouTube community in general. 
The second event that killed Minecraft was the pedophile scandals in 2015 and 2016 in the Minecraft community, in which many prominent Minecraft YouTubers were caught or accused of attempting to prey on children through their platform. The most notable instance was Lionmaker, who was ousted for actually having disgusting relationships with underage children. At this point, the entirety of the community basically went into a tailspin. Every other major community on YouTube just scoffed in disgust, and views since these incidents have plummeted on most channels. There is absolutely no way at all that this could be recovered from. I mean, these issues painted the entire community in a bad coat because, you know, the stigma's never going to be shaken. In a game dominated now by children, the actions of these sickos turned a thriving online community into a desolate wasteland in a matter of just a few months thanks to the reporting on by Scares, Keemstar, and multiple other commentary channels. Since the success of Minecraft had been so dependent on the online hype around it, after the presence of creators garnering the game billions of views, the game started to get less traffic overall once these, you know, pretty much just shut down and left. When the entire marketing of your game is based on the internet spreading it like wildfire and the internet being the main ways that people share and enjoy things, then these things dissipate quickly. I mean, there's just not much you can really do. The third major event that led to Minecraft and its community dying is when many of the same YouTubers who dominated the charts in the early 2010s playing the game retired their Minecraft content from their channels, quit YouTube, or pursued other interests. Four prominent Minecraft creators who have either entirely swapped the focus of their channels to other games or have pursued other interests in some way now have a combined subscriber count of nearly 50 million people, these are only a drop in the bucket of what the Minecraft community used to have, and I think it's safe to say that combined altogether, the Minecraft community used to have a combined subscriber total of upwards of 250 million or more. There is no way that a game could have that kind of influence on YouTube and not blow up. At any given time on Twitch, Minecraft may now only have a couple thousand viewers, or even a couple dozen thousand viewers depending on the time of day, but it's usually less than that. At its peak, this game was usually top 3 games on Twitch at all times of the day, and was already getting, you know, 100,000 streams on the platform consistently. Watching this gradually happen over 6 years or so has been rough to those who used to be included in this community, and I mean, I was part of it for a few years, and the game, you know, it's still occasionally fun if you play with some friends and you build some cool things. But other than that, I mean, there's just no longer any fun to the game. The game has begun to fall apart. Recently revisiting the game has led me to be confused a lot as to what, you know, new things in the game can do, as most of them seem to serve no real inherent purpose other than to just be there in case of this happening. Things that should have been added in, like new realistic biomes, new materials and ores and other things have not been added in, which would freshen the game up a lot more. Minecraft is one of the most influential games in history. It sparked a massive indie game movement, became the most successful indie game of all time, led to thousands of copycat games flooding the market, has its own annual convention, is the second best-selling game of all time behind Tetris, and it permanently changed the gaming world. However, the game now is a shell of what it used to be. The game was spread like wildfire on the internet through YouTube and other social media, and was lifted on Let's Plays. However, the community for Minecraft on YouTube is nothing like it used to be, as a lot of the most popular creators have quit playing Minecraft, been tied up in pedophilia incidents, or quit uploading Minecraft to their channels in favor of other games or types of content. Google Trends shows that Minecraft has been on a downward trend consistently for years now, showing that the game is far from its peak in popularity that it saw in 2013. It is unlikely that the game ever reaches that level of success ever again, and I can't even imagine a scenario in which anything could bring it even close to that point again. Even if Notch somehow returned to the game and began to lead it again, I think the damage has been done to the game already over over the last few years of Microsoft owning it. Let's be realistic, the game could have had plenty more things left to add that, you know, would have made it more fun, but instead of that, it is now getting things that it does not need at all. Console versions of the game are getting less and less updates that add to the already behind versions of the game, and are instead getting updates that add stupid map packs, four mini games, and more texture and costume packs, which now adds the amount of microtransactions in the game up to several hundreds of dollars. Microsoft constantly monetizing the game more and more instead of working to make the game better is killing the game, and unfortunately, none of us could ever save the game from its demise. But yeah guys, this is my video over the Minecraft community and the three things that killed it. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, share this video with a friend, my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, all that down below. Anyways, one last thank you guys for watching this video, and this is Optimus.
signing out. Welcome back to another episode of It's Always the Video Game's Fault, which at this point, you know, I might as well just make an entire series because it just, it, it's always the game's fault. It's never anything else, man. It's just gotta be the Fortnite and the Grand Theft Auto and the Call of Duty, right? So today we'll be taking a look at a Dr. Phil episode because it came up in my recommended and of course, once again, and I, I don't know how we keep running into these scenarios, but we have parents who make video games the devil, make violent video games the devil. So this is a warning to everyone out there playing a violent video game, you know, you're gonna become addicted, you're gonna become Satan, and in this kid's situation, you might become a school shooter, apparently, so I guess the uh, founding principle of, you know, becoming the next big school massacre man is uh, playing Grand Theft Auto, so yeah, just uh, watch out for yourself. Anyways, let's go ahead and just hop into it. Please, your God. Boy! Here I come, this is my final time. You wasn't expecting this, boy! My son is addicted and obsessed with violent video games. I hear your guns. Video games are my son's number one priority. So video games are the kid's number one priority, okay? I can see why that's a problem. I think anyone can see why that's a problem. I mean, he is a child at the end of the day. Lots of kids prioritize video games and playing you know, over like schoolwork and chores that, you know, I think that's just kind of part of being a kid, but at the same time, you can't really let it get out of hand. You know, you can't let him just sit around and fail school and not prioritize or even participate in other things in life. It's not beneficial to the kid. It's not beneficial to stupid parents like this. And it's not beneficial to anybody who watches Dr. Phil and now believes that their kid playing Grand Theft Auto V will turn them into a complete degenerate Satan spawn, so. He plays when he wants, where he wants, and for as long as he wants. Sounds like the kid's making all the decisions in the household. Usually not a very good thing. He has stayed on for up to 20 hours. He never comes out of his room to eat with us, but he will yell out from his room, peasant, bring me a plate. Come to me immediately! I request backup immediately! Wow, okay, so I think most people, if their kid was talking to them like that, would end up- <laughs> This kid should consider himself somewhat lucky, because if he grew up in a household that wasn't ran by himself, that wouldn't be happening, but peasant, come to me immediately. I'm gonna take a preemptive guess and say that she obliges with his commands. The two games that he really likes to play the most are Grand Theft Auto and Fortnite. Well, I mean, yeah, two popular games. So I wonder who bought him Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Fortnite, you know, anyone can download it. It's, it's a game that you just go into the store, it's free to play, you download it, or of course you can go into like a GameStop and buy the, the bundle pack with like Save the World and like, I don't know, Battle Royale skins and whatnot, all that shit. Kind of stupid if you ask me, but then again, I mean, I guess it's a little bit more convenient to just go buy that stuff if you're gonna get it anyways at the store and just download it. But anyway, you know, the whole thing is like, he can't just go into the store and buy Grand Theft Auto himself because I don't know if you know this. There's these little things on a video game. I don't know if you guys have ever taken a really close look at them, but um, they have this little square in the bottom left corner that says like E for everyone, or it'll say like, M for mature, 17 and up. What this does is it legally requires you to meet those guidelines in order to purchase the game. So Grand Theft Auto, which is a mature rated game, is not able to be legally bought by anybody who is not 17 or older. So this 12 year old child did not walk into GameStop and buy Grand Theft Auto 5 because I think that GameStop is, you know, smart enough to realize maybe it's not worth the hassle with the government to sell this kid a copy of a game. So what happened is somebody bought him the game. And now, of course, it's the game's fault. It's not the parents' fault for buying a big game he shouldn't even be playing. It's not their fault for controlling what he's playing. It's the kid's fault because he's playing the game that they bought him. To anybody who has an IQ, I would say probably higher than about 23, you can pretty much tell what the issue is with that. He gets very excited about the number of kills because the more kills you have, the higher you go in the game. That's literally how the video game is designed. This is something that is very clearly stated within the rating on the front of the cover. There's violence, there's killing, things like that are glorified, quote unquote, within the game. Only buy it for people who are mature enough to play it. But yeah, it's, it's of course the game's fault that the kid gets excited about it, right? It makes him very aggressive. His favorite game right now is Grand Theft Auto. Double barrel, bitch! I wouldn't necessarily call this aggression. I would just call this being vulgar. I mean, he's not necessarily like attacking people or anything. He's just playing a video game. But even then, I definitely agree he shouldn't be acting that way, you know? But then again, 
that's the parent's decision to let him act that way, so at the end of the day, comes back on you. It is very violent. They rob, shoot, kill, beat. Empty out there, and everything they do is demeaning to women. Yep, everything you do inside of Fortnite is demeaning to women. Yep, you know, when you go ahead and build up and get a kill, yeah, that, that's demeaning to women. I mean, I can kind of see it in Grand Theft Auto because there's prostitution, but at the same time, I think most people kill the same amount of men that they do women in the game because, well, it's a video game and they're not actively seeking out women to kill in the streets. I mean, usually that's not the case, but I will say buying a prostitute and then killing them for your money, yeah, that's totally possible. But yeah, you know, the whole game demeans women. When you rob a bank, demeaning women. When you buy some DLC like a fighter jet or something, that's demeaning to women. When you kill 37 men inside of a police station, for your five-star wanted level, you know, that that's demeaning to women, right? Yeah, it, it just, the whole game, it teaches you to hate women. That's, that's how Grand Theft Auto works. Didn't you guys know this? I've been playing since Grand Theft Auto 3, and dude, it just, it's all killing women. It's beating women, it's robbing women, killing women. No men are even in the game, actually. It just, it's all women. And the game actively rewards you for attacking only women and not men. Just, it all demeans women. Oh, for the love of God, man. I just, I love parents who don't play video games, who don't understand them, but then talk about the topic. That, that's how most people are with everything, but it, it especially grinds my gear with video games. Jiggly, jiggly, I'm coming for a booty. I don't even see what necessarily was horrible about that comment. Like, he was making a joke. He was literally making a joke. And most of the time, that joke is not being made towards necessarily a woman. It's just being made in general because you're about to go fuck somebody up. I, Jesus, for the, oh my God, Dr. Phil, why are you encouraging this behavior? When my nephew is playing the video games, he's very rude and disrespectful to the people that he's playing online with. Thank you, you didn't say anything. He plays the game online with adults and the language that they use is absolutely horrendous. It is not your place to decide how other adults on a video game designed for adults and specifically sold to adults, it's not your responsibility to control how they speak. You know, it is your responsibility, however, to control how your child acts and how he speaks. Which, for somebody who is so complaining of all these different issues in these games without much knowledge of what's going on, you seem not to be doing a very good job of controlling your child. Beep, beep, beep. CEO coming through. I'm gonna kill you, beat the out of you and piss off and that's transferred over to his mom when i tell him watch your language he'll tell me to shut the up and get out he will turn over furniture he breaks dishes he has basically destroyed his room okay so now this child has actually destroyed his room and is breaking property see now I don't know about you guys, I played a lot of violent video games growing up. I mean, I've been playing Grand Theft Auto since I was three, I'm not even kidding. However, if it ever got to the point that I started punching holes through the wall, and I started breaking dishes, I can assure you very quickly that that shit would have been shut down. I've acted like an idiot on games before, I was that little kid in the lobby cussing people out, but if it ever got to the point where I started like verbally assaulting my parents and like busting shit in my room, there would have been no more video games to play. But yeah, it's gotta be the entire, it's gotta be the video game's fault that he acts that way. It's not the parent who's enabling him to act this way. No, not at all. It's the kid himself. Oh wait, no, actually it's not even the kid. It's the game. And it's the adults playing a mature rated game online cussing at each other who are making your kid act outlandish. It's not you who bought him the game anything like that. How would you like your death to be? Death by nades? These violent games have desensitized him from actual pain and death. He has been bullied. They have desensitized him to actual pain and death. Have they now? They, the video game, which has no real infliction of pain on your child, has desensitized him to pain and death which he has not experienced. See, this is what you love right here. They love to say, oh, it's desensitized him to pain and trauma and conflict. You're not inflicting enough pain on your child. It's pretty obvious, you know, because if, if he would have acted that way in literally any other household with someone who actually ran the goddamn thing, there, this would have been shut down a long time ago. This would have never have been a Dr. Phil episode. I'm sure if you whip that belt up and you beat your kid a couple times across his ass cheeks, he'd straighten up really quickly. I am scared that he will take the behaviors that he's learned in the game and retaliate. He could become another school shooter. That is literally the most retarded thing I've ever heard somebody say. 
and we are not even halfway through this clip. I am utterly shocked at the ignorant comment that this woman just made, and this should serve as an example as to why some people just simply should not have children. The video game is going to make my child a school shooter. I am afraid that the video game will make my child the next one. Okay. Am I the only one who thinks that there should be some sort of intervention for people like this? This is something that I feel like I could deal with in 30 seconds or three hours, depending on how I approach this, but- Dr. Phil's about to light that ass up. If you're so desperate, why did you not write in? Why did your sister write in? Oh, she just got put on front street. Get spit on. This is kind of why I like Dr. Phil, because he puts these idiots up on a pedestal, and then he just completely destroys them for national entertainment. Just one of the greatest human beings who's ever lived. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Thank you. Nine times. Nine times. I guess I'm just complacent to it. I'm, I'm used to it. I feel like I know what's wrong with him. My question is, what's wrong with you? Wow. Breaking news, folks. Parent who bought child violent video games allowed him to get to the point where he's become aggressive, verbally assaults and bemeans everybody within the household, and who now has fear that the child will become a school shooter is complacent in the actions because she has completely allowed this to go on for so long that it has become an issue. Breaking news, CBS News, right here, folks. 200 IQ level play. Yeah, you weren't expecting that because, you know, stupid people like this, it, they dissociate the problem away from them. And then when everyone's like, you know, it's you, they're like, oh, what? I'm the problem here? You have a 12 year old child yelling, get in here, peasant. Bring me this. And what do you do? I do it. You do it. Oh, see, I called it. I called it, dude. I knew it. I knew, I knew it. Why would you allow this? He locks you out of the house in the freezing rain and holds a sign up to the window, I will let you in if you go get me Starbucks. And you go get it. For the love of God, man, dude. I, my head, I, I have a headache. My head has begun to hurt. I'm trying to process this so badly that the, the scripts in my head have frozen. My brain is currently like this. I've been in school for the last 18 months, and I'm gone Good. four nights a week right. and 12-hour shifts on the weekends. And uh, his dad has had um, anxiety disorder and um, heart issues. And so physically and emotionally, he wasn't able to handle him. And so by the time I got home from work, I worked 40 hours a week as well. So by the time I got home, I'm just so tired and mentally and physically exhausted that I would just do whatever I had to do to keep the peace. There we go. We finally opened up the root cause of the problem. Now, all right. The dad apparently couldn't handle him due to his physical mental issues. She's apparently unable to parent him because she works 40 hours a week and goes to school. So am I the only one here seeing this? So let me just explain. Basically what happened was that she bought him all these games and the game consoles, she sat him down in front of his TV while she went to work and school, the dad couldn't handle it because of his problems, so she actively allowed this video game console with these video games that she now decrees as violent murder machines, she allowed them to basically raise this child for God knows how long, and now that he has no respect towards his parents because they won't intervene and do anything about it, she's compliant with all of his demands and his ignorant behavior, now it has to be the video game's fault. It's not her fault for not properly raising her child. It's not her fault for making accommodations to have someone there with him and properly have, you know, guidance and authority over him. It's, no, there's nothing she can do. There's no boarding schools. There's no therapists. There's no programs to help children like that. You know, it, it's just the violent video games fault. See, finally broke down to the root problem. It, it's the violent video games. It's not my bad parenting, yeah. Perfect. Thank you for finally admitting it. That's gonna be it for the video, folks. We finally broke it down. We, we got it. Finally got someone to admit it. This is actually the first time I think it's just been this apparent what the problem was because most of the time they try to hide details and stuff because it makes it easier to blame the game and whatnot. But finally, we have somebody indirectly accidentally admit that they're just not a good parent. Now, I should add that unfortunately, the kid's dad did pass away in September. Probably isn't, you know, gonna make him wanna get off the games any more than he already doesn't want to. I 
can guarantee that it's not going to help this kid and that it's probably playing a pretty big factor into the problem. However, uh, with the mom situation, with working all the time and doing school and stuff, there are ways that you can benefit your child while doing all these different things at the same time. You need to find a way to get him interested in activities outside of video games, get him into sports or something, find something that he actually wants to do, but find something that isn't just sitting him in front of a video game until he doesn't become the kid you want him to be and then you blame video games and you blame the people on the games instead of blaming your parenting. Part of being a parent is learning to actually accommodate different situations and deal with different scenarios. That's what parents have to do. This situation is no different. I hope that this becomes better. I hope this kid gets a little bit of help. I hope she gets some help because this doesn't benefit anybody. That's going to be it for this video, you guys. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you're brand new around here on my channel, follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on down there as well. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. If you'd like to become a channel member and help support my content, you can do so by hitting the join button down below or the become a channel member link in the description. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, playing violent video games and becoming addicted, and signing out. The Game Theorists, it used to be a channel that, you know, it just had something special about it. It was really entertaining, it kind of got into the science behind games and stuff like that, but of course that now seems like it's been forever ago, as today's Game Theory channel is just a disgrace to what it used to be. There's several reasons why I now hate Game Theory, and... Honestly, this used to be one of my favorite channels on YouTube, but now I just, I can't even watch anymore. So the first real reason why, you know, Game Theory as a channel has just completely fallen apart is the content has just, it's become underdeveloped and it seems like it's intentionally stretched out for ad revenue. And this is not the only channel where this has become, you know, a really big problem. Lots of channels on YouTube do this, and in some, some regards, it's not really a bad thing. As long as the content, when you're stretching it out, at least you're adding to the content constructively and you're not making it worse. One of my biggest issues, especially with the game theorists, is that, you know, their content back in the day was like maybe five to nine minutes, usually, a video. And now, you know, like the longest episodes would have been like 14 to 18 minutes. And that's not a terrible length, especially if we're going like really into depth with one of the theories. I had no problem with that, especially since, you know, the 14 to 18 minutes was like an outlier video. But the videos now are averaging like 14 to 18 minutes. And it's not because, you know, they're adding on to the theories. They're not adding anything constructive. They're not going more in depth. They're not using any different type of quote unquote science. None of that shit. It's literally just MatPat pretending to be funny, failing attempts at humor, and just adding redundant jokes and skits into the videos that just don't make any sense or don't belong in the video whatsoever. Truth be told, I'm not going to the game theorists, you know, for comedy. Okay, there's plenty of other YouTubers who can make me laugh. I'm going there to perhaps see a cool new theory about a game that I've loved for a long time. I'm not going there to hear MatPat attempt at comedy. And when I mean underdeveloped, I mean, you know, they got all the cool editing and everything. You know, they spend a lot of time editing their videos. They write decent scripts, but it seems as if not only the theories, but the premise of the video itself just always seems to be really lackluster. Not even that the theories are, quote, stupid. It's more or less that they're just digging and they're reaching for shit that doesn't matter or for theories that just don't make any sense. And the second biggest reason that I now really despise Game Theory as a channel is because MatPat is literally unable to take or refute any forms of criticism whatsoever. Anything you say against him is immediately ousted as hate. You're hating on him. You don't want to see him succeed. There was like a big issue. I don't, I don't really know too much into the whole subject, but I know a lot of people were upset about this. Um, apparently MatPat was like selected in a special committee to meet Pope Francis. It's been a while back, I think now. But he was like one of 10 or 20 YouTube creators online and just overall, you know, internet celebrities who were pretty much selected to meet the Pope. And uh, apparently people hated that he was selected. And you know, I can kind of understand why because MatPat is not the face of YouTube. If anybody should have went and I don't know if he did or not, it should have been like PewDiePie or somebody like that. But apparently this was turned into an entire subject where everybody hated on MatPat, you know, all kinds of different shit happened. I don't know. It was really stupid. 
but I guarantee that the situation itself was not as bad as MatPat tried to make it. May I add that MatPat was also criticized during an Ask Me Anything he did over on Reddit, and when this happened, no matter how many upvotes it had, no matter how popular the response was to MatPat's questions, if you criticized MatPat, he was not going to respond to you. He basically just acted like your question didn't exist, even though you could ask him anything if you asked him, say, why he was such a sellout, which somebody actually did, and it ended up being the most upvoted post on the entire AMA, he just wasn't going to respond to you. That's how he responds to criticism. If you're criticizing him or any point that he stands on, you're just a hater and he's going to ignore you or he's just going to turn it against you. That's what he does. He gives no rebuttals to defend himself. He doesn't defend any of his theories. He just blatantly calls everything hate, it seems like. Now, I don't think MatPat is a bad person. I just think that he's unable to take criticism, and truth be told, if you're going to be somebody online at all, you're going to have to have a little bit of thick skin, you're going to have to be able to either, you know, take shit and, you know, not cry about it, or you're going to have to be able to refute things that are said about you, and if your only rebuttal against things is to just say, these people keep hating on me, and I don't deserve it, you know, that doesn't make, that doesn't make you any better as a person, and it doesn't make you any better as an internet celebrity, it's just pointless. And the third reason why I, you know, don't like game theory anymore is because it went from game theory to Five Nights at Freddy's theory, like, in the snap of a finger it seems, and it led to the downfall of the channel. Five Nights at Freddy's videos consume the channel now. I mean, if you go to, like, the most populars in the channel, like, every channel has their most popular videos, you should probably be able to see them on every channel in, like, a playlist, but if you go even to, like, the videos tab and select it to be your most popular videos on the Game Theorist channel, um, it seems like almost every single video that's listed is, like, Five Nights at Freddy's related, and, I mean, if you're gonna be the Game Theorists, you have to review it more than Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I understand that Matt Pat loves Five Nights at Freddy's, but it, as soon as the Game Theorists actually just started focusing on Five Nights at Freddy's, the entire channel just got worse. The quality of the videos completely fell apart. The target audience of the Game Theorist's videos are not Five Nights at Freddy's fans. As a matter of fact, I would even be willing to say that a lot of the new Game Theorist's fans actually came because of Five Nights at Freddy's. That's just my observations. It's not entirely a bad thing, it's just something that should have never happened in the first place. Past theories, of course they had flaws. A lot of them, as a matter of fact, were either disproven or just refuted very well. And, of course, Matt Pat doesn't take that very well either. If you refute one of his theories, he's like, well, it's just a theory. You need to make them well, and you need to make sure they make sense. You know, the past ones, they had flaws. You know, they might have fucked up on some factual stuff. But, like, they were genuinely interesting. And I can't honestly say that anymore. I tried to watch the most recent Game Theorist video here. The, uh, Pokemon Terrifying Truth of Fire Pokemon. I couldn't even get four minutes through. It took two minutes for them to get to the entire topic of the video, and it was just drivel that they started the video off with. That's not what I'm there to watch. I'm not there to watch just fucking stupidity. I'm trying to see a cool theory, or something hopefully that brings a new perspective onto a game that I've loved ever since I was like four. But no, that's not, that's not even the focus of this channel anymore. The focus of this channel now is to just pump a video out, make it as long as possible, drag it out as far as possible for more ad revenue. Just don't, you don't even have to get into science. You don't have to get into real deep into the science. As long as you're cracking some very mundane jokes, it's a good game theorist's video. It's just, it's not interesting anymore. I don't think they are in touch with their core audience or their old fans anymore. And honestly, I think the Game Theorist's channel has just completely fallen apart. That's my opinion. If you like them still, that's cool. You can have that opinion. I personally don't. And it's a shame to have seen that the channel went down this direction, but anyways. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Wait for part two coming tomorrow. I'm just kidding. There's no part two to this video coming tomorrow. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. And until next time, guys, this is Optimus, signing out. Momo Challenge is raising concerns in one New Jersey town. The game involves an online avatar called Momo, and it tells people to perform tasks. The tasks get more violent as they're completed. If a player doesn't comply, Momo threatens to kill them. 
in Brick Township, school officials are warning parents about this game. That's after first graders were threatened in school by a classmate who heard about the game from an older relative. Well, I, I did. I feel uncomfortable. He looked at me and said, Mommy, this little boy said Momo is going to sit on me and stab me in the face. As if YouTube needed yet another controversy, there is something going around now for the uh, for the parents who don't understand YouTube to get all scared of. And I don't know how many requests I've had to cover this topic, even though it really only blew up like yesterday. But it's just, this is ridiculous. So most of you have probably seen, as it's been reported on by CNN and virtually every single news source in the world at this point, but YouTube Kids apparently is having uh, videos for children that instructs them on how to commit suicide. And then there's this big Momo thing going around, which is uh, basically this creepy looking character that like threatens children and peer pressures them into doing all this you know, psychotic crap, but that's what we're gonna talk about today, folks, because primarily this is all just a big, I would say, hype train of nothingness. So, here is a picture of Momo, who, uh, yeah, you know, she's looking pretty cute, I'd say, but Jesus, God damn, it's creepy. Apparently there's videos on YouTube Kids, which is obviously an app made for children where YouTube actually filters content and primarily promotes content on channels that are family friendly and have already basically been vetted and stuff like that. It's an app for children that's supposed to keep them safe and from viewing stuff on regular YouTube where basically anything goes. So, um, yeah, obviously it's an app for children and people are definitely going to be more mad and scared about something like this happening on a kids app, but content on this kids app apparently is having the Momo Suicide Challenge show up in the videos and like, uh, it's weird. So she's been around for a long time. I mean, I've seen Momo before this and you know, it, it's not anything new, of course, but apparently there's people making YouTube kids videos that is using Momo to promote suicide and like hurting people and hurting themselves. And it's during like Peppa Pig, Fortnite videos, things like that. And it like teaches them how to kill themselves or to self harm or to like perform dangerous stunts. It's gotten to the point where there's actually schools like sending home letters to parents and things like that because kids are talking about it so often at school and things like that. But one UK mother told the Daily Mail that her eight-year-old son began seeing Momo in some of the videos that he watched and that he became scared of the dark and didn't want to be left alone. But I mean, but when you see something like this, obviously, especially as a child, like, yeah, you're gonna be creeped out. Like, I have chills going up my spine just talking about it, you know? But it's definitely taking a toll and people are talking about it. I mean, literally, in my personal life, I've heard almost nothing about anything but Momo and, and people are freaking out. Don't show your kids anything on YouTube. And it's bad, dude. It's like, it, it shows kids to like put knives to their neck and stuff like that and obviously this isn't right this is pretty terrible but the truth is folks is that this whole momo challenge thing is actually ran by hackers who are looking for information in people's data this is not ran you know by anything more than that and apparently this whole momo thing has boiled over into basically a blue whale challenge knockoff unfortunately northern ireland police actually had to warn parents on facebook that momo would not crawl out of their child's phone and kill them which honestly if you believe that in the first place like if you actually thought that was gonna happen maybe children wasn't the thing you should have been making but let's be real about this whole thing of course yeah it, it's definitely a problem that people are doing this and it's weird it's like why would you even think to do that on a kids app like oh I gotta make some videos of Momo telling kids to kill themselves but even then it's like this is not as big of an issue as people are trying to make it out and somehow filthy Frank has been tied into this whole thing which I don't understand personally, but now parents are getting mad because they're, this guy is is on here and he he's talking about suicide and he's making jokes. Everyone knows what Filthy Frank is. I mean, if you use YouTube and you're not like six years old, you know that he's, he's being funny. Filthy Frank's one of the funniest people in internet history, but now you have all these parents who are talking about all this and now Filthy Frank apparently is a problem. And I knew at some point Filthy Frank would become some sort of issue or controversy after he stopped and everything, but now there's this pediatrician, uh, her last name's Hess, what is her name? I, I I don't even know, it just says Hess, but, oh, Free Hess, that's her name. Uh, she saw a video back in July when another mom alerted a to her that she and her son were watching cartoon videos, but spliced in the middle of one of them was footage of a man in sunglasses telling children how to slit their wrists, aka Filthy Frank, so... 
Um, yeah, they, they put out a call to action to report it. It got removed from the site or whatever. And apparently it only took YouTube Kids a week to pull it down, which, yeah, it's definitely a little lengthy. But then a month later, apparently, or this month, I'm sorry, she saw the video again. And it was the probably the actual Filthy Frank video. And she was all mad because it hadn't been taken down. But what she doesn't understand is just because you report something that uses it on a different app doesn't mean that it's going to just get taken down site-wide. Like, these parents, for some reason, seem to think that YouTube is going to be able to police the entire website by itself there are hundreds of hours of YouTube videos uploaded every single minute of the day regardless of the time how do you think that it's even possible for YouTube to police their platform so well that something like this cannot happen it literally is impossible they could hire a million people to do it and they still wouldn't be able to get it down hundred percent it's just it's impossible and, and the whole problem that I really have with this whole thing is is that they're trying to blame YouTube for this. It's not YouTube's fault that there's weirdos out there making this kind of stuff. And really, one of the big problems is all these parents who use YouTube to raise their children, okay? I, I was born in 2000, but my parents did not let me sit on YouTube for eight hours a day in front of a screen, you know? We went outside and played with our friends and stuff like that. Of course, we did watch YouTube, but it wasn't to this extent that kids now are. And even on top of that, you know, they didn't expect YouTube to 100% police their website and make sure we weren't seeing anything we weren't supposed to. Parents are not taking enough responsibility responsibility for their kids and it's always everyone else's fault it's youtube's fault that this is happening youtube can't police you know billions of youtube videos all together you know they, they can't do that it's got to be youtube's fault that i don't understand the internet and i'm not competent enough as a parent to make sure that my children isn't viewing stuff that i don't want them to see because instead of actually parenting my child and you know taking the time really to set up parental features and controls on my child's content and on their devices and stuff i basically just let them free roam and yeah of course they did use youtube kids but even then once again youtube kids can't be 100 percent clean with how youtube works it just it's not possible folks no parent that understands youtube YouTube would ever consider that as even an option for them to quote-unquote police the website so well. YouTube is policed, it just mainly in general, based off community feedback. You have to report most things for YouTube to be able to take it down. YouTube is not just sitting there with some agent at all times of the day just scrolling through watching YouTube videos to see if there's something bad there for your kid. It's just, it's impossible. So, it's not YouTube's responsibility to raise your child and determine whether or not they should be seeing this and seeing that. It's your responsibility to monitor their YouTube account, see what they're watching, block channels and content you don't want them seeing, or just simply don't let them use YouTube. Don't let them online. I mean, let's be really honest. The internet really isn't a place for children to be. I mean, especially if they're this young, you know what I'm saying? It seems like parents have some sort of misconception that everything on YouTube is curated in the way that it is over on, like, television. But on TV, everything that's put there, all the commercials and advertisements, all of the content that's actually broadcasted to your children is selected and then manufactured by all these TV networks. YouTube is simply just a host platform that literally almost everyone has access to and can upload things to. They are not the same thing. You cannot expect the same level of like content, administration, and distribution and moderation that you would expect on a television show. I'm sorry, Nickelodeon is much safer for your children because Nickelodeon makes everything and puts everything up on Nickelodeon. Parents just love to shift the blame on everyone else. It's not your fault that your children's watching things that you don't want them seeing. It's got to be YouTube's fault, right? Now, thankfully, Miss Hess or Mrs. Hess is actually kind of uh, advocating for this. She's saying that parents need to be more aware of what they're watching and stuff. But then there's all these other parents on Facebook Book and making these stupid posts where they clearly don't understand technology that isn't their computer to well then they think Facebook's the only website on the entire planet who keeps saying oh don't let your kids watch YouTube don't let your kids watch YouTube you know that is your parenting choice and in, in all honesty if you're not going to monitor what they watch maybe that's best for you that way you don't ruin it for everyone else but literally YouTube has a feature where you can literally go through the history of what you know whoever was on the account was watching and you can see every single thing that they've ever watched if you set it up to be that way. YouTube has parental controls. You're not even supposed to really be on YouTube unless you're of age, unless you're using the YouTube Kids app. But, I mean, there's just, there's so many ways for parents to keep up with what their kids are watching that they don't use. 
And then when they don't use it and their kids start drifting into that bad side of YouTube like pretty much everyone does because, well, YouTube is a big platform with a lot of different things and, and AI basically recommending everything. And of course, there's some bad apples out there who do bad things, who try to mess with kids, who try to scare kids into giving them information and calling their WhatsApp number like this whole Momo thing. But because their parents aren't paying any attention, these kids are obviously very vulnerable and then they go and they do all this stuff and then the parents are like, oh man, it's YouTube's fault. That, I, that they didn't parent my child for me. It's like, get a grip, you know? Be a parent. I, I know that that's hard for a lot of people to deal with and accept that you're just not a good parent, but you're not. Letting your child sit there for five hours a day watching YouTube videos it is the same thing as it was letting your child watch five hours a day of television. It's not the internet's fault and it's not social media's fault that your child is seeing stuff that he shouldn't be seeing, you know? It's not my fault that you inadvertently allowed your child to watch hackers' videos and be told how to kill himself, you know? That, that isn't anyone's fault but your own. And YouTube's pretty much getting hit from like every single angle possible at this point. I mean, they're getting hit from pedophile controversy started by people who want clout. Now they're getting hit by this and, and this misinformation being spread by parents and, and the lack of responsibility of parents. And in reality, it can all be solved in the exact same way. Parents take accountability for your children, make sure that they're, what they're doing on the internet is something you monitor. It's literally that simple. On top of reporting content, because YouTube will take it down if there's something wrong with it. If there's a video, I assure you, if there's a video where Momo shows up on a YouTube kid's video telling your kid, well, put a knife up your asshole, you know, like, they're gonna do something about it. They're not just gonna be like, well... I guess this one gets to go. <laughs> Wait till this kid does it. <laughs> like, come on now. I mean, let's use our brains a little bit. I, I know we get emotional because it's children and stuff, but come on now. This whole misinformation thing needs to stop. This whole blowing this out of proportion thing needs to stop. Yes, it's wrong that hackers are using Momo to attack your children, but pay a little bit of a goddamn attention to your kid. Because God forbid you don't and something happens to him, you know? Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about this whole thing down below. If you're new around here, make sure to hit like and subscribe if you're brand new. Follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on there. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. If you'd like to become one and help my content make sure to hit that join button down below and until my next video guys this is optimus doing the momo challenge and signing out. Mobile games have been kind of grinding on my last nerve for a very long time now at this point, especially with the crazy outlandish advertisements. And today, we're going to be taking a look at those because, man, I gotta tell you, some of these are just over the top to a point that it's just obscene. Mobile games, uh, they have gotten to this point, right, where, you know, lots of people play them. They make millions upon millions of dollars. They're a legitimate force in the gaming industry and everything. However, their advertisements, when you compare them to like a traditional video game, I guess, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's night and day. I mean, traditional video games, I feel like they've kind of perfected the advertisement, right? They know what works, they know what doesn't work, and they create masterpieces, quote-unquote, based off of those things. But mobile games, man, just, just take a look. Alright, now this masterpiece of a commercial here is promoting the game Kiss of War, which we're going to be taking a look at some gameplay up here in a few minutes to see if it really does line up with the advertisements. But I mean, this ad is just blatantly ridiculous, right? I mean, we're, we're in the midst of war, right? And basically, I mean, we got physics out here working, if you know what I'm saying. So now obviously these work, right? I mean, there's no way that these advertisements are just made randomly and have all these advertising budgets put behind them and money thrown at them left and right to get them basically everywhere. If people aren't clicking on the ad, ads and, and downloading the app and downloading the game. I mean, that's the whole reason that they're putting these things out. So it's definitely a very effective marketing tactic. And I think we could all agree and, and understand why this would be such an aggressive and easy marketing tactic. I mean, the gameplay just looked so riveting. It's so unique. The experience was just unmatched, man. I mean, just taking a look at that. I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like. Kiss of War makes us feel like we're basically in war, right? 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 
I'm about to answer your question. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some gameplay here. Like I said, you know, we're pulling out we're pulling out all the stops with this one's here, fella. We're not just going to sit here and pretend like we know what's going on. I have to see if Kiss of War is really what I'm seeing here. I, I got to see if Kiss of War is an action-packed war simulation that will enthrall my senses in the entire, like, sense of the word. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, a very run-of-the-mill mobile shooter, okay? Doesn't really look all too fun. Just, once again, super generic looking. I mean, the graphics are pretty decent, but when it really comes down to it, it just, uh, it, something about it, man. Just seems really, really generic, and honestly, yeah, you wouldn't see me playing this one, but... Now, with that being said, I understand why people play this. I understand why people are downloading this app and clicking on it and everything, and, and just, you know, getting themselves some of this just fantastic war simulation. I can't really put my finger on it, though. I'm not necessarily sure what it is about these ads that get people so enthralled and get people so ready to download. I mean, come on now. It's it's pretty obscene. I mean, let's be real. We all know who is looking at this and download this. You, bro, you gotta be peak level horny in order to just be like, I need this game. I need this game on my phone so I can see this, bro. Either that or you gotta be like a kid or something, dude. I mean, this, this isn't enough to get me to download a game. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm just not a simp like that, you know? I just... It it just isn't gonna work on me. I mean, come on, like, Commander, the base is under attack. The missiles are killing hundreds of our soldiers. What do we do? Should we call for help? Hang on. I'm trying to get up. Hold on. Uh, ugh, this gun. It's all in my way all the time. Commander, we need to go now. We gotta go. We have people dying out there. They're just ramming us with missiles. It seems like they have never-ending ammunition. We need to call in supplies and troops now. What do we do to solve this? Come on, I need a command. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, God. My big, juicy, dump truck ass is getting in my way. You know, just give me a second, though. I I'm getting up now. Like, Christ, by the time these characters get up from their sniper outpost, everyone's gonna be wiped out, and F-16's gonna come through and empty the missiles on the entire group. Now, obviously, with this advertisement, I pretty much suspected that it was gonna work, but I, I gotta tell you, I didn't think it was gonna work as well as it is. I mean, this company has to have a stupid amount of just advertising budget. They gotta have millions of dollars or something to be putting out these kinds of ads. I don't know, but when you look at the download store for it, it has 101,000 reviews, 4.7 stars of 5, and well over a million downloads. I mean, Jesus Christ. You also gotta love these screenshots that describe the game here, right? I mean, because they look totally like what we just saw on the ad, but I mean, obviously, these ads are, are getting people to download. It's getting people's interest. It's piquing their interest, and they're clicking, and, and they're getting into the kiss of war. Once again, I'm not necessarily sure what it is when I think back on it that's causing it, but, I mean, it's it's ridiculous, right? Because even though there is, like, minor elements of that kind of stuff in the game, it's just very obvious misleading advertising. And it's ridiculous at that. I mean, it just is over the top in every sense of the word. And then when you actually get the application, it's nothing like it's being made out to be here. You would think this is like a bunch of women after gym day or something out here doing squats. But in reality, you're just playing some run-of-the-mill typical mobile war game, I guess, you know? Nothing really all too special about it except for the physics, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, the physics are really good in this game. I mean, take a look at this advertisement from a game called Guns of Glory. I mean, this just looks like Age of Empires, right? Like, back in the day, just classic RTS. Just immersifying yourself in the art of war, right? Just getting glory in the fact that you're out here just defending yourself and making these crazy armies. Do you think that the game really plays like this? Do you think it's really this high-paced, you know, and, and really action? Packed and juicy. No, I'm gonna venture to guess not. I'm gonna venture to guess that it's another one of these run-of-the-mill advertisements 
that just hype the game up way too much, and then when you play the game, you're falling asleep after 10 seconds. I mean, the guy is basically rising up on a little raft in water and there's spikes over his head and, you know, he, he doesn't know what to do, right? I mean, he just, instead of attempting literally anything other than to just sit there and get impaled by the large spikes coming out of the ceiling above him, he's decided he just wants to stare up at it until it eventually just crushes through his spine and, and crunches him down. Because why would you ever try to do anything different, right? That wouldn't make any sense. If you actually attempted to, like, save your own life... Oh, and, and what if I told you that there's like this really aggressive dog on the other side of this pole, and when you take it out, guess what? The dog's gonna chew your face off. Oh, hey, though. It turns out that you happen to be in a building with an obscenely large circle-shaped thing on the top that's like half popcorn and half lava, and if you just somehow took the, like, pole out that blocks the lava from falling, you could basically eviscerate the dog by melting it to death with molten lava. And then you play the game and it's like you can get to stage 110 minutes because it's that boring. I mean, am I going to sit here and act like I've never fallen for a ridiculous video game ad? No, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that. I'm not going to pretend like I haven't ever seen something that just looks so outrageously fun on my phone and just downloaded it to realize that all it is is just garbage. Now, I feel like a big problem with a lot of these games, and I think a lot of people will agree with me on this, is the gameplay that you see in the advertisements could be real. I mean, hypothetically, you could be building these massive armies and taking out other people in real time and just, you know, formulating the greatest military advance that's ever been seen on planet Earth, but either you have to play the game for like three years to even get to that point, or you have to spend like $90 in microtransactions pretty much first day. And in reality, that's like the big problem with mobile games, right? You know, they're all free to download and everything, and they look really great, but hey... Once you get 30 minutes of gameplay into it, you're basically having to buy microtransactions to continue. And of course, you never see that in these over-the-top advertisements. You never see, like, you know, if, if, the, if it's basically like a real-time war game or something, right? You know, your soldiers marching through just clearing the enemy lines, like your jets coming in and shooting down their bombers. You dropping, like, a nuclear bomb on their headquarters and just wiping everything out. And then you basically click down on the little money thing and you buy $20 worth of gold so that you can contend in the next fight. You don't ever see that in the advertisement. It's always something just over-the-top. And I love this screen cap that I found of this game here. I never knew anxiety until I played this, and it's a bunch of people, it's in horrible quality, but it's a bunch of people just standing around on the street because, yeah, anxiety, man, that's cool to have. Having anxiety is trendy, you know? You never knew anxiety until you played this. You know, I've lived a very normal life. I've never had the, the panic of bullshit going on where, like, you know, I can't really go out in public without having an anxiety attack. Can't really do a lot of my uh, normal daily functions without just feeling nervous all the time. But then I played this one mobile game where a bunch of, like, I, like Sour Patch Kids stand in the fucking street. And then I was just like, man, it all came down to me, right? I, it just clicked. I don't know, it was crazy. I mean, mobile game ads, I'm not surprised that they're over the top because in reality, when you're promoting a free product that already has the reputation of, hey, you're going to have to spend $9 million to contend in this game, you pretty much got to do whatever you can to really get people downloading and clicking it so that you can run ads and sell them microtransactions. But at the end of the day, man, like, can we get a little bit more honesty out of this? Can we, can we get them to kind of tone it back a little bit? Like, I already know what's going to happen. The advertisement's not tricking me anymore. I'm a 20-year-old man. I know the trick, okay? Uh, I'm not a... I, I, I don't have no object permanence like the moment the concept just leaves my train of thought or my vision I just doesn't exist anymore like I know what you're doing and I know how you're trying to promote your game I know what it's going to end up being it's going to end up being a three out of ten and not fun and I'm not saying that like you can't advertise your mobile game because obviously especially with like a free product you kind of have to right you need people to download it you need people to get hip to the idea of your game but I mean, do we have to make such misleading ads that just overpromise what's going on in the game? Do we have to have so many of these just stupid advertisements that treat me like I'm a dumb dumb, like I'm seven years old and I have no concept of what this game's gonna be, and then trick me into downloading it, right? I mean, there are probably some really fun mobile games out there, you know? I honestly don't play a lot of them, I play like one or two. I'm still playing Clash of Clans in the year 2020, but most mobile games just suck, and if they don't, then, well... 
yeah, I'm just not playing them. But mobile ads at this point are just, I don't know, they're giving me like some sort of brain disease, man. I don't enjoy it. I just want to be able to go through a YouTube video without seeing something stupid. I want to be able to go onto the internet and not have to see some goofy advertisement for something that just is obviously not what it's really showing up to be. It's basically like those hamburger advertisements where the burgers like all juicy and the condiments look just crisp. The ketchup's like dripping out, steaming hot. And then you get the thing in real life and the cheese is upside down in the box. There's no bun. The burger's raw. The lettuce is four weeks old and the tomato isn't even cut. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, making a mobile game and just running goofy ads, and signing out. Pokimane, commonly referred to as an e-girl, the person that a YouTube versus Twitch civil war of the internet has started over. Recently, a large amount of questions have been raised about her demeanor, particularly concerning her egregious copyright abuse while consistently streaming herself having, to put it simply, a nice lunch while watching content, giving little to no reaction whatsoever. Her tweets that she's made on a privated, separate Twitter account to try and limit any critical responses to the sometimes insane things that she'll say. This all reached a sweltering amount of heat when Leafy is here made a content nuke Pokimane, essentially grilling her for many of issues, some of which are aforementioned, and essentially adding that he thinks that she isn't really that attractive. This video alone caused a completely insane reaction from primarily Twitch streamers, but there were some YouTubers also thrown in there, who'll historically jump on the back of anyone who dare say anything negative about Pokimane whatsoever. In fact, when Killer Keemstar, the drama alert demon of YouTube and Twitter, made a simple bait tweet that worked more effectively than anything I could have ever mustered in my own head, the reaction was so instantaneous and insane that it could legitimately be asked if these people had Keemstar's notifications on, waiting for a tweet that they didn't like to appear. With a complete overreaction of the Twitch community and Tier 3's flooding forums such as Twitter, I thought that it would be great to do something, well, at least somewhat unprecedented. I created a crusade, a commentary crusade to be more specific. All the folks in this video have graciously given some of their time towards this video to stand together and to make a solid case about all of this insanity, and to wrap up everything into one cohesive video. The hypocrisy must be noted, and the general stupidity needs to be addressed. Personally, I think it's clear that the vast majority of these streamers reacting in the way that they did really only did so for one of two reasons. Number one, they wanted to look really nice and like an ally of Pokimane to benefit themselves career-wise, potentially getting attention from the Queen of Twitch, or... Number two, they want to be. Through this video, I believe I've created the largest collaboration in the history of the commentary community on YouTube, and quite frankly, one of maybe even YouTube's largest ever collaborations. And as you're going to see through this video, I think I've rarely, if ever, seen the commentary community so unified on a specific subject. It would take me forever to read off this entire list, therefore I'm not going to do that. With that being said, I think it's best if we start off with everything here. This video is going to be a long one, I know, but please bear with us on this because this is stuff that needs to be said. I mean, these are the topics that have created somewhat of an internet civil war between YouTube and Twitch. Streamers versus YouTube, and therefore, I thought a chaotic but wonderful solution up. Let's start a crusade. What's up, man? How are you? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you real quick. Uh, how how would you rate Pokimane? I'd give her a 2 out of 10. 
Keemstar seemingly ignited a lot of this whole debacle, to be quite honest. His tweet, which has now become somewhat of a meme, created such a wave of adverse reactions that I was genuinely stunned when I saw it. I mean, Keemstar said, Pokimane 2 out of 10, which obviously looks as if he's rating her by her appearance, and this caused an armada of Twitch streamers to fire back at him. Keemstar has gone on to make the claim that he wasn't rating Pokimane by her appearance, but by his opinion of her as a streamer. And I'll start it by me, po uh, you know, rating Pokimane 2 out of 10. Now, obviously, I was talking about her content, but a lot of these people out there that, you know, immediately assumed I was talking about their looks, well, you know, that says more about them than it does about me, right? Now, I think that it's pretty obvious that you can draw the negative conclusion from Keemstar's tweet, but it's extremely apparent that throughout all of this, Many of these streamers and online figures only reacted the way that they did simply in order to benefit themselves or to just grandstand and play a holier-than-thou role that most of them really could not fulfill. Then days later, of course, Leafy dropped a huge video and the commentary community also kind of went ballistic alongside, of course, Twitch. What's up, guys? It's Adrian the AB here, and we're back with another commentary video talking about Pokemon and explaining why she's been trending on and off Twitter. So yeah, Pokemon, one of the most hypocritical, boring, and generally unfunny streamers ever. Oddly enough though, it seems that the vast majority of people who openly chastised Leafy either entirely ignored any legitimate criticism that he provided in his video, instead choosing to hyper-focus on the attractiveness point, but ironically enough, many people even chose to make the point that basing Pokimane off of her appearance was wrong by, uh, making fun of how Leafy himself looks. Talk about fighting fire with fire. Now, when it comes down to it, it's obviously really easy to try and slam dunk on Keemstar and Leafy. They're somewhat of anti-heroes when it comes to YouTube. Keemstar himself, he's been embroiled in countless controversies over the years. And Leafy was widely regarded as a YouTube cyberbully as early as 2016. The reactions, though, have gotten so ridiculous that we get clips like this one here. This is the most frustrating thing, because I'm a fucking React Andy myself. Ah, uh, so we finally have someone who's honest about why this whole thing made them mad in the first place. He does the same thing that Pokemon got called out for. I get so mad at this when YouTubers literally fucking sit around. They make one fucking video a month and get like Patreon money. And then they cash out with like a six figure check because they have a, a sea of simps. And then they turn around and shit on streamers who literally fucking go live for six to eight hours every day. Ironic that YouTubers are the ones with an army of simps. Not to toot my own horn here, by the way, but no, I, I don't upload one video per month. I upload one to four a day. And boo-hoo, you press live on Streamlabs and sit at your desk and eat lunch while watching a YouTube video, interacting with a chat, reading a donation or two every couple seconds, hey, thanks for the Twitch Prime, and occasionally having something maybe interesting to say. You know, how do you do it? How, how do you? How could it get any harder for you? How can you possibly survive? Funny that the same guy rattling off about Patreon money and simps giving it over to these YouTubers has 16,000 people who actively sub to his Twitch. Guy's making what? Bare minimum 30, 30 grand a month maybe? Something like that? And that? That's bare minimum. That's if like everything is Twitch Prime subs and he's barely getting donations. Like that's nuts, dude. Of course there's gonna be dead space in between. It genuinely tilts me. You could make a compilation of me sitting around, not even on camera, with a fucking video playing in the background. You could, when you're live for 13 hours a fucking day, dead air in between. It's so dumb. Yeah, sure, there's gonna be dead space, but dead space usually refers to, what, 5 or 10% of something in which you're not talking? It's not intended to be literally the whole point of your content. When you're live for 13 hours a day boohooing to me about how you only had to talk for maybe an hour and a half of it to give a non-genuine reaction to some shit that happened in someone else's content, sorry, but I really don't feel sympathy for you. It's literally a first world argument. Which job is harder, Twitch or YouTube? Which dream is harder to fulfill? Who gives a shit? It's literally just a point that people like this use to try and deflect criticism that they're not transformative. They're projecting their insecurities about themselves and surrounding what they do onto us, and I simply don't care to hear it. But let's just go along with the ridiculous notion that YouTubers, they don't do anything, right? You know, they sit around twiddling their thumbs until the 30th of the month, and then they decide they need to get a video together, right? Let's assume that that's what happens. You really think that people putting a video out only once per month aren't putting in a lot of effort? There's YouTubers who spend hundreds of hours on just one video. One video per month, hundreds of hours, if even that in a month. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. A lot of these people, they only jump to defend Pokimane because it's in their own best interest. 
If Pokemon gets called out for it, then all of a sudden it's possible that they get called out for it. But hey, you can't attack your tier 3 subs, man. Come on, you're gonna call out the Patreon money on YouTube when you have the same thing going on there? I don't know, I figure that to be kind of ironic. I, I think here is the time where I I'm, I'm gonna kind of just pass the torch on. And just let, uh, let everyone run the gauntlet here, I guess. So, uh, yeah, take it away, guys. Pokimane is a name that all of us should recognize. She's currently the sixth most popular Twitch streamer in the world, also boasting a YouTube channel with over 5 million subscribers. But despite her popularity, she's regarded by many as a Twitch thought and talentless e-girl, with a simp fanbase who donates her extraordinary amounts of money, thinking they have a chance. These insults are thrown out like a slur to anyone who supports her. But in reality, she's one of the few OG Twitch streamers that still maintains a significant audience to this day. Emane Anis was born on the 14th of May 1996 in Morocco, but moved to Canada when she was four. Not a lot is known about her early life, but we do know that she first joined Twitch back in 2012, primarily streaming League of Legends content. Pokey enrolled in McMaster University in 2014 and studied chemical engineering. It was during this year where her streaming career really began to take off and also gave rise to some rather interesting clips that are quite noteworthy in today's climate. Nigga, you ain't funny. Only lame niggas say that shit. Pokey studied for two years before she dropped out in 2016 to pursue a career in streaming full time. By this time, she'd amassed around 200,000 Twitch followers, but also decided to experiment with other genres of content, including ASMR. But her biggest year wouldn't come until two years later, in 2018, when she rose from 700,000 to 2.6 million followers during the span of that year, mainly due to the emergence of Fortnite. Dope for washing your hands. Yeah, <laughs> Pokimane first streamed Fortnite as part of a sponsorship, but quickly saw the potential and ended up streaming Fortnite for over 40 hours a week. She became so successful that she was awarded the best Twitch streamer in the Streamies Awards for 2018. But during the subsequent months, she would open herself up to many controversies. From striking, to sponsors, to simpage, to spouses, she's truly done it all. So Leafy recently released his content nuke video on Pokimane, and Twitch streamers ended up reacting to it on their stream. One of the major points against Pokimane in Leafy's video was the hypocrisy around her use of copyright. And in an attempt to defend Pokimane, this point has launched Twitch streamers into complete denial mode transformative is subjective you transforming something and somebody else it, it they're both transformative in their own way dude and if, if sometimes if you think that it's not sometimes it's not because it's not transformative it might be because you don't understand like the culture or, or the whatever why are you comparing a live stream <clears throat> to a fucking youtube video <laughs> these are two totally different mediums i could be wrong but i'm willing to bet that if I go through her content on a YouTube channel, like this, bro, my... it's probably not her watching YouTube video. Growing up, I didn't have any, anyone in my family that was it was in real estate. I didn't have anyone in my family that you know had millions of dollars. And so for me, I do remember being like 15, 16 years old, having 20 bucks and working part time after school and like saving away all that money. And then I used that money to get my real estate license. I barely graduated high school. I never went to college. He has his own uh, millennial money parents, episode. So I should not cool. have become wealthy statistically. But I believe that I put in the work and I really wanted something and I was really determined and I really enjoyed what I do and that, uh, you know, accumulated to where I am today. I literally started from the bottom. I'm not saying that I was ever homeless. So Pokemon argued in my DMs that this video of mine that she copyright striked with a roughly 17 second Twitter clip in it is not fair use because it's like smashing two different movies together, but this video of her looking at her phone while another YouTube video plays is fair use. The re-upload of the Twitter beef wasn't transformative content, so I was able to get it taken down through my MCN. Although I was legally within my right to take down the video, morally and as a content creator, it wasn't something that I should have done because I would get caught. Ha <laughs> ha! 
All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm doing this last minute, but I'm gonna make this as good as possible, so I'm the first person that you guys see, other than Optimus, probably, but Pokemane has a massive goddamn nose, dude. <laughs> like, look at this shit. <laughs> look at her nose. Look at her nose, dude. Like, yeah, dude, she's like a bad person and all that. She um has wrongfully striked down creators. She censors literally everybody that says anything negative about her whatsoever, but I think that she can smell my next joke, dude. <laughs> I think that she can smell it coming from a mile away and I'm really sorry if this is like destroying the tone of the video I haven't seen any of the other guys parts It might be like so serious and like completely well edited and all that and I probably have like some stupid CSGO gameplay With like pictures of Pokimane, but dude. Oh my god, but yeah, no her content sucks She's not entertaining or interesting. She's not good at the games that she plays. She's annoying her voice is incredibly annoying She sounds like she probably nags everybody around her. She's extremely egotistical and prideful for no reason whatsoever she makes terrible takes on Twitter and she sucks nothing about her is entertaining whatsoever she's never been entertaining and if you're a guy and you find her entertaining then check your pants if you're a girl and you find her entertaining then I mean that's cool too but either way she's not funny or entertaining whatsoever you can always say oh yes Cyrus it's your personal preference you suck I don't like you but I don't care you can't change my mind I watch one of her reaction videos and it's her just sitting there on stream eating salad and doing nothing if this entire video or me just watching everybody else's parts will like eat salad and do nothing whatsoever you would not be entertained you'd be like wow why why the f is he eating salad if you disagree then you're wrong i'm not saying that my opinion is right i'm just saying that yours is not pokemon you suck try to strike this video down and your career's over goodbye <laughs> no god damn sub to my channel right now or i'm going to beat you up this isn't a joke i'm literally going to beat you up I well since that situation went down pokemon has responded to the backlash and oh god what is that smell? Oh, I thought I took the bloody bins out. Oh, no, my mistake. It was just Pokemon's tweets. Let's have a look. I'd like to publicly clarify that I don't condone going after someone or their sponsors simply because you disagree or dislike them. Um, well, that's exactly what you fucking did. And I will say for this company to sponsor a video that's literally 20 minutes of talking shit about me. You were so offended, clearly, that they were sponsoring a video talking sh** about you, the great Pokemon. How could they ever sponsor a video talking sh** about you? However, I also think content that spreads lies, misinformation, and insults people based on their looks shouldn't be sponsored regardless of channel size. That sort of thing can traumatize people and fans cause a lot of unnecessary hate. I understand if you disagree with my stance, but this is just my opinion, as you are allowed to have and share yours. No one's saying you can't have an opinion. You're claiming Gundam was spreading misinformation. What misinformation was being spread? He was making jokes about simps, your fans, because Quite frankly, the whole internet knows that's true. Apparently, it offends you and people make you realize your rent is being paid by 45-year-old men in their mum's basement. Pokemon did a stream where she turned her webcam off and then tweeted out about it to let everyone know as if she should receive a hero's welcome. People don't just watch for your personality or gameplay. Just average 11k plus viewers with no cam, late at night, and with a 10 second delay. Oh my god. God. Someone get this woman a Medal of Honor stat. A 10 second delay. Everyone knows a 10 second delay is a simp's only weakness. In reality though, this tweet is just sad. And it kind of makes me uncomfortable when people use it in like an aggressive way. Like if someone is remotely nice to me and they're just like, simp, 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 simp. I think that's a little bit weird. Oh my God. Oh, that is so aggressive. Typing out the word simp. How could you? I mean, if I was making millions off the back of simps, That'd probably be my reaction too. Is what it is, but I'm making bank of you suckers. It's just so weird to me though. I think she would get less hate if she just kind of embraced the simp meme, but she tries so hard to push it away that it annoys people because she acts like it doesn't exist. The last tweet we spoke about saying that It's a Gundam was spreading misinformation and lies. It wasn't there a huge drama of him like quitting for a while for like years because he was so sad and whatever that people like, and now you're going to come back and pretend that you don't care. Like you obviously f***ing care, dude. <laughs> Cucky wucky big mad. Honestly, I can't even say that I'm surprised anymore when like every time there's drama on the YouTube, a bunch of people accidentally expose themselves for being massive hypocrites. And this Pokemon thing right now is like, obviously no exception. Basically every streamer that's like of any relevance on Twitch at this point has reacted to this video that Leafy made on Pokemon.
And for whatever reason, dude, it's like they, they just, you know, stop listening as soon as Leafy says one thing and decide that's the only point from the video that needs addressing. And then their way of addressing the only point they think is important is just by being massive hypocrites about it. And it's honestly just kind of embarrassing. For those of you who, like, don't know what I'm talking about if you've been living under a rock, Leafy has this segment in his Pokimane video where he calls Pokimane ugly. And, you know, is that personally my cup of tea? No. But it's pretty obvious to me, at least, that one of the main reasons Leafy included this whole Pokimane is ugly thing is because he knew it was gonna get a reaction. And because it was kind of funny. Like, regardless of whether or not you agree you should have called her ugly, you can't deny it was kind of funny. And not to mention, a lot of these streamers had this reaction that it was uncalled for and unnecessary, but I, I hate to be the reminder, but all of this drama literally stems from the Keemstar 2 out of 10 tweet, so it's literally a direct reference to why all this drama started. But regardless, I think my favorite part of all these streamers freaking out about Leafy calling them ugly is like, their argument is that it's really rude and uncalled for and unnecessary, and then they all proceed to call Leafy like an ugly gremlin who should never be allowed outside. And that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But in most of these clips, dude, I swear, these streamers are just like, Ah, oh, Leafy is ugly. Didn't you leave the internet for being ugly? And it's like, you, you do realize that if you think Leafy is a horrible person for calling Pokimane ugly, if you think that's uncalled for, you aren't much better by turning around and being like, Aren't you ugly, you massive no chin loser? It's just a really weird way of making your point. I think a good, like, example is it's basically the equivalent of saying, like, violence is always wrong, right? There's never a time to be violent. And if you disagree with me, I'm gonna snap your legs. Like, that is basically the statement you guys make. Aw, oh, man, calling her ugly is screwed, you ugly gremlin. Like, it w w doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Because either we're, we're all good with calling people ugly or no one's allowed to call anyone ugly. But, but we don't get to play both, you know? You can't be like, oh, you can't call Pokemon ugly, you ugly gremlin. You know, it's either cool or it's not cool at all. You can't make certain rules for certain people. Th that's literally almost the dictionary definition of being a hypocrite. But yeah, that's basically my thoughts on the situation. I would really appreciate if you checked out the, uh, the, the channel. I'm trying to hit 100k on another channel, you know how it goes, and I'd appreciate some help. Big thank you for Optimus for having me on the channel. And uh, yeah, Twitch streamers, just like stop being hypocrites. It's not that difficult. All right, guys, welcome and big ups to the homie Optimus for having me on the channel here, man. Thank you so much for the DM. I appreciate it. When presented with the opportunity to offer your expert opinion with a bunch of other fine gentlemen that we got here in this video today, it's just an offer that you can't refuse. Now, we've seen all the clips of Pokemon going around and in this latest round of videos with all this drama that's going on with her right now, right? She's going Going after people's sponsors, she's sending her army of 12 year old viewers to go and dislike bomb videos, threatening people in Discord calls that she's gonna take their videos down, etc. etc. The whole nine yards, we've pretty much seen it all at this point. But the one thing that she does that constantly stands out to me, and this isn't even an actual specific incident, but she just does this continuously, and this is her worst problem that she has right here she is her own worst enemy. Anybody who's involved with content creation on the internet, whether you're a YouTuber in the commentary scene or you're a streamer, you're an upcoming person, whatever, big or small, we all know the number one rule of the internet. And that is do not, under any circumstances, ever, for any reason whatsoever, ever let on that you're mad about something. Once you let on that you're mad or that something has bothered you, you have officially taken the bait and you are just, you're gonna get punched 10 times harder than you've already been punched at that point. Pokemon continuously fails at this rule. It's a very, very simple rule to follow. Just do not respond to trolls. Take no bait, okay? But then when you go and do stuff like make a separate Twitter just to talk shit to people, it would seem, and then make that Twitter private, and then you're tweeting out things such as, imagine following someone on social media just to be an ass hat in their replies, LMAO. No, Pokemon, I don't think you're laughing your ass off about this. It's very obvious you're not laughing your ass off about this. It's very obvious that this stuff is getting under your skin and you couldn't make it more transparent if you tried. Even if you were to just respond to it on stream only, that would significantly cut down on the amount of hate that you get. When you tweet something out, you were just inviting yourself to get ratioed, right? The worst take of all time, her dreaded tweet. People don't watch you for your personality or your gameplay. Well, I just averaged 11K plus viewers with no cam late at night and with a 10 second delay, smiley face. <laughs> Oh, Yas, Queen, Slay, get him, sis. You really showed all those trolls out there. They are just, you, you just, the amazing clap back. 10 out of 10. Wow. I mean, come on, my dudes. Listen, can you imagine being so delusional 
that you think that doing one single stream out of the clear blue with no face cam that's late at night with a 10 second delay, like, okay, weird flex, but all right. But can you imagine thinking that doing that is proving some kind of point here? I think we should officially challenge Pokimane to this, okay? Why doesn't she do no face cam for an entire year, okay? And then we'll be able to watch how her viewership changes over time. I'd be very interested to see the results in that. But she won't do it. And you know why she won't do it? Because <laughs> she's a millionaire and she likes money. She's cute. She's rich. She plays video games. She says, ooh, woo. She could take her pick of any guy she wants. Only problem is, it's just, it's not going to be you. I hate to break it to all you Pokemon tier 3 subs watching, but she ain't shit. Like, she pretends to be this completely perfect, uwu, cute streamer girl that can do no wrong, when the truth is, she is so far from that. But don't feel too bad, guys. Lucky for her, she has millions of simps willing to forgive her for pretty much anything. They they don't care about her screw-ups. She, she's fine. Ha 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 po Poke Squad, guys. She gets away with everything, but God forbid you call her out for it. It, or she will attack you with her simp fan base while playing the victim. Like, I, I don't know what little bubble she's in where she believes she's so entitled, but she just sucks at taking criticism. Like, she just gets butthurt about it. Oh, and this tweet, by the way, this just proves how delusional she is. People don't watch you for your personality or your gameplay. Just averaged 11k viewers with no cam, late at night, and with a 10 second delay. Hell yeah. <laughs> That smiley face is literally me after reading that. Like, what point is she trying to make here? Does she know that guys can still beat off to, to her voice? Oh, wait, guys. To be fair, it, it was late at night and <laughs> with a 10 second delay. So, well done, Pokimane. W well done. <laughs> like, who even asked? But yeah, Pokimane bad. Uh, supposedly, she has like a secret boyfriend as well, who she's purposely not made public because it's in her best interest. These simps are dropping her racks, believing that one day they might end up with Pokimane and live happily ever after. But it, it, it's not happening. I hate to break your hearts, but I, she, she doesn't care about you. Anyways, I'm gonna go cancel my Pokimane tier 3 sub. Big thanks to Optimus Vo for inviting me on. Poke Squad out. Alright, now today I'm going to be discussing the duality of a fucking man, and how Pokimane, the family dollar Nico Lowell, has pushed herself into becoming more and more of the ass of the joke, literally. Now allow me to dig for the depths of hell to show you what I like to call the Pokimane Reddit. Oh, now we all know Reddit as a beautiful forum where nerds, geeks, and degenerates alike all share their thoughts, memes, or ideas. However, there's a dark side to Reddit as usual, and just how Pokimane has a subreddit for her fans to share things of her, there's a separate group of fans who are showing what her fanbase really wants. So let me just enlighten you what r slash Pokemon hot is. Now this is where men stoop down to the lowest of low. The desperation of wanting her as a girlfriend is all over this form. And here's the funniest part. This isn't even the first subreddit that was made for her fans that are her simps. There was plenty of others, but I don't even have that kind of time on my hands to search them all up because I could honestly care less. But when you take a look at this subreddit compared to her actual main subreddit, there are more people who are sub for Pokefit compilations than for her actual personality on her subreddit. So let's be honest, would you actually watch such lackluster content of her sitting there and getting up from her chair? Absolutely nobody, unless they were just truly that desperate for a female that attracts them. And let's be honest, nobody's watching this, and if you really are, you just want to get off to it. All that Pokimane does is play games, eat salad, and get it from her chair. And yes, there are plenty worse streamers, but copy striking videos is still a crime, and going after sponsors is even worse. And although people value her so much, it clearly shows how dense her fans are if they would just say all over her subreddit to go and report somebody's video because they criticized her. Just because Pokimane is thick, doesn't mean she's immune from criticism. And oh yeah, and as I was searching the subreddits, I came across the most hilarious simp posts ever. Such classics as, Pokey's got some explaining to do, and I made it, I'm officially close friends of Pokimane, which she put in her bio, 239,000 of my closest friends. But let's be honest, if her camera was off, they would lose it because they don't have their precious jerk-off material. Even in a poll, most people said they wouldn't even watch her about the camera. And honestly, in my personal preparation, I wouldn't either, because it's dull as fucking repetitive. When you aren't even adding new shit to the table, it's just boring. In all reality, Pokemon and XQC really just made themselves look mad for no reason. Anyways, this is all I have to say. Elusive is the name, and destroying tier 3 subs is the game. Gone. Gaming, no more. Career, already kind of non-existent, but now further non-existent. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Leafy is here, Jr. here. She's charming and interesting to watch in front of a camera. She's attractive, and to my knowledge, she's pretty good at the game she plays. Let's just get into it. I know the whole meme right now is just calling Pokimane unattractive, but...
well, frankly, Pokey, if you were to approach me wearing this, I think I would let everything that you've done slide. Okay, but in all seriousness, I do have something to talk about here today, being Pokimane and the Twitch community. About a month ago now, I did a video about Pokimane on my own channel, which was essentially a recap of all of the controversies that she's been in and my own prescription for what she should do in the future. I didn't expect this video to perform nearly as well as it did, racking up almost 600,000 views in the time since I posted it. But rather than stroke myself off for the next minute, I'd like to talk about what this view count actually tells us. Pokey is no stranger to controversy. The past year has been a somewhat rough one for her reputation outside of the community for sure. But within it, she is relatively insulated and doesn't receive a ton of criticism from other streamers. I don't necessarily blame them for backing her up, even if I disagree with what they're saying. Many of these people are probably friends with her and want to see her do well. And they probably don't have the best impression of YouTube commentary videos. It's no secret that many Pokey viewers are more or less an echo chamber of simps or people who will be fine with pretty much whatever she does as long as she continues to be Pokimane. This more or less insulates her from criticism making it so that she doesn't have to change. Or at least, that's what I would say. I feel like the narrative that Pokey is immune to criticism is kind of misguided and not based in reality. While it's true that there are definitely a lot of people in her audience who will like whatever she says and reaffirm her actions to be righteous in any situation, I don't think this is as large of a demographic as many in the YouTube audience would make it out to be. Oftentimes, individual incidents of people's so-called simping will become the face of a fan base and perpetuate a stereotype about who her fans are as a whole. But I think that a lot of her audience isn't in the mindset that she can do no wrong and has no room to improve. I think that they just don't really care about any of it. What a lot of people in the commentary community seem to miss is that the majority of internet users honestly don't give a shit about who did this or who said that. They just passively watch content that they enjoy and move on with their day. They have little to no investment in the lives of these people or care about their bad takes or who they argue with. As a result, she'll be perfectly fine and continue to make millions of dollars a year being a Twitch streamer because most people frankly don't give a shit if their favorite non-drama focused creator says something mean to someone or takes down a video or goes after after someone sponsors. For those of you wondering why it is that anyone can still support her, well, well, frankly, most people aren't nearly as autistic about the internet as you and your three friends on Discord are. Oh, and uh, the people on her subreddit that want to report Leafy's video are absolutely pathetic. Get a fucking life. Hello, my name is Bill Baines. I don't make videos. This is a first for me. I'm an acquaintance of a few commentary channels and John Swan called me number one commentary freelancer, which means I help other people research their videos. And you can find me on Twitter at Bill Baines underscore. If I were Optimus, I would have titled this video YouTube commentary, Pokemane Civil War. Not sure what the Avengers have to do with it, unless Captain America's about to come in and shield Pokemane from criticism. Ah, oh, wait, Destiny, you already did that one, didn't he? Anyway, I'm sure that the other guys have talked about clips and the Twitter beef, so I'm gonna keep that to a minimum and I'm going to be making some sweeping statements because I only have a small amount of time and I'm hoping that the other commentators have made arguments that back up my points. Um, I was spitballing on Twitter and I kind of came to the conclusion that these streamers are protecting each other about this copyright issue because they're all guilty of the same thing. I summarised that the reason Leafy fears so much backlash is because they really want to shut down this conversation as fast as possible. Now there are three main ways to deal with internet drama. Uh, one, you let it blow over, uh, and then you get on your own grind, and then people don't really care after a while, and then, you know, they forget about it. Jeffree Star has done this really well recently. Number two, uh, you obliterate someone's argument, and then you ridicule them. Idubs does this really well. Colossal is crazy. Masters it. And number three, you label an opponent as politically incorrect or immoral, so you don't have to argue them or debate their ideas because they're a bad person. Tana tried this with Idubs, Deji did it last week. Now, out of these, most of the time, one and two will work. Number three works less so, um, and I couldn't really go with option two because we can all agree that there is some kind of content leeching going on here at some level. In another Avengers timeline, they picked option one and Hassan the Hulk bumbling around like an idiot doesn't slander Leafy and turn the entire commentary community against them. Option three uh, was what they went for, and I think they're going to regret that over the coming months, as commentary channels absolutely destroy their credibility, which might inadvertently cause copyright issues for Twitch. What, what, what the Twitch folks don't get, and they don't get that they're, they're, they're opening themselves up for something bigger. You know, first it starts out with, uh, you know, defending Pokimane. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, making her out to be some kind of victim. But then, you know, as the curtain gets lifted just a little bit higher, you realize it's just some kind of self-defense. And, you know, these guys just watch videos and stream it to huge audiences and add little or nothing to it, which doesn't make it transformational. And this this defense of this girl who, I believe he said it best, she's desperate to protect her image. She's willing to strike bow back. She's willing to go after sponsors. She has revealed herself to be Susie Lou with a prettier face and a nicer speaking tone. 
but that's just opened everything up to just such a bigger world as as the as the twitch curtain gets lifted more you know you find that these guys they think they're they think they're they're artists they think they're something special they think the money equals some kind of I don't know that that, that they're that they're better than most people. They don't consider themselves lucky that they're at the right place at the right time during the you know, you know, the right tech explosion. That, that, that they're somehow unique and special and better than everybody else. You know, so much so that, you know, they they don't even realize like in XQC's case, that 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 copyright applies to them. They don't think anything applies to them. So this weird defense. Of of Pokimane over a drama video that could she could probably could have used to push her own her own product has just revealed that you know these top flight Twitch streamers think they're better than you and the rules don't apply to them if they're even aware of the rules to begin with. It's it's special. It's it's fun to watch. They don't realize how funny they are. They don't realize how funny this looks. And what's worse about it, you know, the record companies are trying to catch on that they're playing. You know. Music, which I don't know. I think the record company should let them play the music. It just it help it, it helps the record companies. Now the movie companies are going to be, uh, you know, have have an eye out for them. Now maybe YouTubers might file a strike or two, considering if if, if there's no types of type of fair use. I mean, it just show you YouTubers tend to be a lot more generous with their with their content and give people less of a hard time. But now we've we've opened ourselves up to. This entitlement of the Twitch community, the fact that they think they're better, the fact that they think they're doing something like bigger than what it is, like they're like they're artists. It just it kind of exposed them. You know, we found out that you know the captain of the football team is kind of an asshole and not that humble. In this era of the internet, we've seen one leaf user video cause an entire internet civil war. It's it's better than uh, the Axes versus the Allies, the North versus the South. It's time for YouTubers versus Twitch streamers. T Twitch streamers who think YouTubers are all a bunch of assholes, and YouTubers who think Twitch streamers are all a bunch of pussies. It's time for the battle of the ages. And to be honest, it's really fucking stupid. I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. I've had a lot of fun uh, as I sit here on my mini vacation, you know, looking at my phone, just seeing the, the back and the forth, you know, the Twitch streamers who are getting called out for stealing content and the YouTubers getting called out for encouraging tidal waves of harassment. It's really been a lot of fun. But I think the best part about this whole issue is that it's exposed so many little things that nobody ever really talked about, like the Twitch streamers who are uploading full-on reactions to videos, Susie Lou style, to content that they do not own uh, uploading reaction videos that are not transformative in nature you know this has happened for ages but nobody really talked about it until now even in a post jinx youtube nobody really cared about this until now and i think that that's really interesting because leafy's videos they're not in-depth you know uh dissections on certain youtubers they're they're not you know like that at all they're shit posts they're jokes they're memes and it doesn't devalue the actual criticisms he gives in these videos um but at the end of the day, they're not, you know, extensive uh, exposés on certain people. But what they do do is they, you know, to kind of touch along, you know, tickle little issues that nobody really thinks about. And, and it, it does start to make us think. It starts to make us think about how these people are so sensitive. Why is everything harassment? Why are you allowed to just post somebody else's video with, you know, minimal reactions where you're sitting in your chair, you know, filling your mouth with food as you watch somebody's content that they slaved away in for hours, you know, and, and just sit there and give these minimal reactions like, ha ha, wow, oh my god, guys, look at that, as your chat just erupts, you know, with, with, with approval of this type of content. It's just weird. And I think what all of this serves to highlight is the differences in culture between Twitch streamers and YouTubers. I joked about this being like an internet civil war. I mean, it kind of is. But, you know, like this, uh, the actual civil war, where there was a clash of cultures, quite literally, on the internet, we're kind of seeing a clash of cultures where Twitch streamers think one thing is okay, and YouTubers are like, no, 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 we've been through this before. This is not okay. And I think, you know, we all owe Leafy a little, uh, you know, a little uh, thanks for uh, just giving us a lot of good entertainment, man. 
Twitch streamers do need to be more wary of, you know, the content that they're using. And I think overall, um, this has been quite an interesting week. I don't care and neither should you. Not because it's some kind of cool personality trait to go against the grain, but because in a week's time you'll all not give a shit anyway. When Optimus uploads this Prime video, don't forget to leave a like and a comment telling him how saucy the topic was and then dip onto the next video and complain about the next thing because that's exactly how it goes. I personally feel like if there's somebody out there that can genuinely say that they care about Pokemon reacting to, or not reacting to, should I say, somebody else's video, then they probably have not much to worry about in life and quite frankly, I envy them. Have a heart attack tomorrow, end up on ICU and quite frankly, Frankly, you won't give two fucks about YouTube versus Twitch. That clearly applies to most things though and most topics, including the things that I talk about, but that's my point. This is the entertainment industry. You probably shouldn't care as much. In fact, the sole reason I'm even here talking about it is because my man Optimus called upon this stupid Brit and I've got respect for the man. So, Twitch versus YouTube. Yeah, more like Pokimain, XQC, a load of other random streamers versus a load of YouTubers with a Twitter account, most of whom you've probably not even heard of, including myself. But here's my 10 cents that one person asked for. YouTube and Twitch, on a company level, they're both great and shit at the same time. They both give people a platform to game on, to talk on, to create things on, etc, etc. However, Twitch bans people for nothing and YouTube demonetizes people for nothing. You can argue that it's not for nothing and there will be a reason some Somewhere, but the fact remains that neither company are very good at explaining their decisions. The communication from both of these companies is awful, fuck them both. Thanks for giving me a platform YouTube but you're still shit. In terms of creator versus creator, we're all just people with a microphone and a camera just trying to make something of ourselves. However, sitting in front of a camera lends itself to criticism. I of all people know that I've had my fair share. I just feel like in this particular situation, people need to focus on something else. Pokimane likely streams several hours a day and during those streams, she watches other people's content with little to no reaction. Thousands of streamers do it on both Twitch and YouTube, don't forget that. You may have caught Pokimane doing it, but that doesn't mean you're gonna catch them all. What I personally think would be nice if Pokimane said, right, this video is great, I like their content, I'm gonna link their channel in the chat, there's 30,000 people watching, can we get them another 5,000 brand new subscribers? That's probably too easy though, isn't it? In terms of streamers having little to no reaction to other people's content, they argue that they stream 35 hours a day and therefore can't have reactions 24 seven. If that's the case, now hear me out on this one, this one might seem ludicrous to you, but perhaps you should stream less every day instead of sitting there scoffing your face whilst feeding off other people's content. Don't be so fucking ridiculous, Dan. As far as YouTubers complaining about Twitchers and Twitchers complaining about YouTubers goes, it's all falling on deaf ears. People will continue to react to videos on stream and there's not an awful lot you can do about it. There's so many people that can scream, I stream 15 hours a day. Yeah, but I script my video, record it and then edit Edit it for 15 hours. Streaming a game is so much easier. Uh, but yeah, I stream every day and it's extremely tiring for me. You upload one video a week and get that sweet Patreon cash. At this stage, it's a case of my dick is bigger than your dick and quite frankly, everybody is embarrassing themselves. For me, as long as XQC continues to scream because that makes you funny and correct, as long as the Twitter warriors from both sides continue to spew the legal jargon that they found on Google, as long as the audience continues to use the hashtag YouTube versus Twitch so they get a couple of likes on each tweet. As long as YouTubers such as myself keep up the fantastic editing and continue to brag about it, and most importantly as long as Pokimane continues to show a sweaty feet to the camera and gets up once every three hours to walk across the room and occasionally bends over to show that thick ass of hers to a tier three subs, I don't give a fuck and neither should you. Peace out. What's up, boys? It's Bumpkin, and this Pokemon thing is kind of fucking wild. I feel like this whole situation is kind of weird with the whole Pokemon thing, and then it turned into this weird Twitch streamers versus YouTubers. I don't know. It's just all kind of a big deal for some reason right now, but I just kind of find it a little funny. So at the end of the day with Leafy's video, he just said what a lot of people were thinking. She's not that funny, and personally, she's not that attractive, despite what her tier three subs would say to you. And to be honest, when you're streaming, all that stuff doesn't really matter, as long as somebody likes your content whatever keep going but i feel like the icing on the cake of it all is her awful skills when it comes to taking criticism and i mean they are awful because like it's one thing to you know publicly humiliate somebody on your stream but it's another thing to um take away somebody's sponsors yes he said something bad about you boohoo let's move on i'm pretty sure this guy ended up talking more about her viewers than her anyway so i don't know why she was so angry at the end of the day i really feel like it didn't do much to you honestly she probably wouldn't be in this situation anyway if she didn't try to come for that guy's sponsors in the first place but you know like i said terrible when it comes to criticism so of course she's gonna say something if you somehow didn't know about what happened with that already 
the guy that made the video basically clowns some of her viewers or one of them for not paying his mortgage or whatever to donate to her and i mean like hey if you don't do that and you decide to donate to pokemon anyway i feel like you just deserve to get bullied at that point he also calls her a twitch thought i think which was kind of unnecessary then again every once in a while she'll do something a little bit suggestive in order to you know get her viewers back up make sure they're paying attention she didn't like this so she goes for his sponsors for some odd reason and this guy's a very edgy youtuber so you know he's probably not getting monetized very much and with him being full-time that's probably where most if not all his money is coming from so coming for his sponsors was a little bit you know extreme i feel like is a good word for it another thing that's really been stirring up the internet recently is the fact that leafy involved her having a boyfriend and his video on her and i wish i could say i was joking when i tell you she was losing twitch subs after everyone found out she had a boyfriend and i mean if you don't consider your community simps after that i i don't know what else to tell you it's just kind of right there in front of your face but i mean hey at the end of the day i feel like everybody deserves one second chance you know pokimane no hate to you but um do better have a good day <laughs> all right i'm done here Hello everyone, my name is Rith, and following this train against Pokimane, I would like to harp on, or at this point flogging the dead horse, about how Pokimane has a persona that she is trying to protect, and that persona is to become the streamer that alludes to the kawaii and giddy type of character. With recent events, many people are tainting this image of Pokimane props herself out to be. And of course, being a streamer, it's going to be easy calling someone a hypocrite. You may get up every single day to stream for hours on end, and we all say things that may be contradictory to another statement you may have said last week. And people like me and the people that I associate with can make a commentary video pointing it out because to us, it's something that stands out. It's considered to be a matter of mindset because like the commentary community, we make our videos under a sharp highlight reel of what we said in the past because we don't want to make ourselves look like absolute hypocrites, thus leading to someone receiving criticism about their behavior, something that Pokemon really tries to deflect, but being met with criticism, she falls in this tight eggshell situation where you can try and take the criticism and say that you're sorry for what you've done, or you can try to defend yourself about the criticism you received, and when being cornered, she'll open fire in both directions, thus leaving an insufficient response to something like critical commentary. And that leads to my point as to what she finds as transformative content. Her definition of transformative content is, and I quote, receiving and giving commentary while watching something is transformative, but the logic that is portrayed in her apology video emphasizes this statement but rubs off in the completely wrong way. In her apology, she addresses where she took down Bo Blacks' video of the public Twitter discord between herself and Keemstar via her MCN, and she made this video summarizing it up in, It was morally unjust for me to take down the video Bo Blacks made on me, because it was a public Twitter discussion on Twitter for everyone to see, but I still had my own right to take down the video. Here is that clip. Although I was legally within my right to take down the video, morally and as a content creator, it wasn't something that I should have done because... I mean, at the end of the day, those were tweets that me and Keem made publicly and videos that we made publicly. I really get your point. Um, I would like to say, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, I mentioned this to Bo Blacks in DMs way later that I wasn't fully aware about the situation and how copy strikes affected someone's channel. I was under the assumption that full-on strikes are what take down a channel once you get three, and I thought that it was different to copy strike a video than to strike an entire channel. One of the biggest misconceptions on YouTube is whether or not something is fair use, and in this particular case, Pokimane was in the wrong for striking Bo Blacks' video, because his videos can be under the categorization of news, and when you apply fair use to the context of a news video, you are rightfully able to use copyrighted material without permission from the appropriate copyright owner for a limited and, as the courts deem, transformative purpose as to comment on, criticize, or parody such copyrighted work. From what we've gathered, she's registered her strike on Bo Blacks' channel unaware of the consequences it can have on the mobility and function of it. From personal experience, my good friend Elucid has been a huge victim of receiving false copyright strikes, and I will have you know that it is a very, very stressful situation, and to get a strike to expire can take up to three months. And speaking of false DMCA strikes, it is actually a crime to falsely take down fair use content, and for someone as big as Pokimane to do something like this, with being under the knowledge of what she does, is a very problematic issue. And one of the common arguments Pokimane uses is that she was unaware of the contrasting traits between a copyright claim and a copyright strike, but when in the face of the law, being oblivious to knowing it won't get you out of any legal trouble. That's just how the cookie crumbles.
All right, men, so today I'm here to talk about Pokimane and why exactly I'm not really fond of this individual. Whether it's her being sensitive on a whole new level, the fact she's nothing but a more mediocre sniper wolf or any of her recent controversy, I don't really like Pokimane as you can tell and that's why I'm here today. So the first thing I'd like to touch up on is the fact that her content is complete and utter ass. Given her large following, you'd think the content that she makes is actually somewhat good, but oh boy, if you thought that, you'd be totally wrong. As 99% of her stream content is her sitting on her thick ass just watching YouTube videos while doing nothing besides eating food and making a bunch of really generic shitty remarks. I like it. Oh, I really like hot dog man because I'm kind of hungry. Wait, are they going to let us do stuff like this? There's no way they would show this for this long without letting us do it, right? Despite this, however, the Sims are still constantly throwing money at her for doing literally nothing whatsoever. It really is funny how the Sims believe that just because they throw money at her, they're gonna get laid when in reality, she's just laughing her way to the bank knowing that she can literally just sit on her fat ass doing literally nothing whatsoever besides watching YouTube videos and still make a fat paycheck because she's a semi-attractive woman and the Sims are gonna throw their entire bank accounts at her if it means that she's gonna read off their name and read off their donation. And it's funny because it's not just her that does this, it's a big part of the Twitch community, including XQC, who actually tried to back her up on this. Pokimane streams is just her watching videos, adding actually nothing to what she's watching whatsoever. There's times where she's just straight up eating while watching YouTube while people die to I her. I do that though. I do that too. I love doing that. That's fucking poggy, dude. Everybody does that shit. I love how he stated that he does the same thing as Pokimane as if he's proving any point at all. If anything, now I just think that XQC is just as bad as Pokimane as far as content goes. And while I'm here, besides her content, there's one more thing I'd like to touch up on. Fuck! What the fuck is it with you? I was looking at the light. Fuck! Pokimane is one sensitive ass person. If you want a good example of just how sensitive she is, I got a fucking good one for you. Fun fact, if you join Pokimane's Discord server and you type the name of anyone big who has criticized her, you will be immediately banned from her Discord. I actually made a video on my second channel showcasing how easy it was to get banned. It only took 11 seconds to get a swift ban just for typing the name Leafy is here, who for those of you that don't know has actually been pretty critical of Pokimane in these past few days. I really don't understand how she's this sensitive and she's as big as she is it's like if you can't take criticism it really does go to show you aren't cut out for this career path in any way whatsoever because when you're on the internet and you're a public figure people are gonna criticize you no matter who you are no matter what you are people are gonna criticize you and if you can't get used to that then you're really not in the right career path man i'm just gonna say so if she wants to continue doing this as a job with you know a somewhat normal mindset and a good reputation in the community she's really got to grow a tough pair of titties and realize that no matter who you are or what you are people are gonna criticize you and you have to get used to it and take the criticism if it's valid in any way but anyways man that's really all i have for today big ups to optimus for letting me on this video today it really does mean a lot to be here anywho all that aside i've been decept and i'm out peace hey what's up guys it's kaya uh, the other day i was just sitting in my computer in my room casually and i see a nice text from optimus and it said do you want to come in a video with the rest of the commentary community and give your thoughts on Pokemon? Honestly, I couldn't decline that offer, so here I am, obviously. So what we're going to do is take a quick look at this clip, and then I'll address what I need to say. I'm going to be honest. I think the only way people like this stop is if people like me and my community give them feedback that this is not an okay thing to do. Not attack them, but I hit a little dislike, and I say, this not cool. That's how YouTubers work. If they're not going to work off of morals, they're going to work off of dislikes and comments and whatever. You know, Pokey, I'm really glad that you said that because I hope you don't have a problem with us all hitting a little dislike on you and telling you this isn't okay. Believe it or not, Pokemon has actually gone out of her way multiple times to attack people's genuine revenue sources, as in sponsorships and taking down their videos and claiming them. She's not the little golden child y'all originally thought she was, and she still fucking isn't. She's messed up way too many times for us to all let it slide, and it continuously happened and happened and happened again with her just with a little oopsie to try to cover it up. That's not how it works. She's attacked people's revenue sources, gone for sponsorships, she's lying. There was actually a point where she took down some kid's video for taking Fortnite clips and editing them together and making little tages out of them. The community highlight clips, might I add. And she had some in there. So she proceeded to basically say it's not transformative and it's so difficult stealing other people's content, you know? And she took down the videos, of course, because that's how she is. She's hardly ever playing a game. 
It is 80% of the time just her watching a video and eating food and putting very minimal reactions or any engagement into it. And even worse, she posts it to YouTube after she did it on Twitch. It's hypocrisy. You can't do that. You can't come at someone for not being transformative when you eat a fucking salad every day on a stream and people just give you money. Thank you for stealing their content. There are people out there that literally throw their life savings at women like this on the internet. I don't understand it. It's insane that everyone just die hard defends her. I can list a ton of reasons on why you shouldn't, to be honest. Number one, she tries to cancel people. Number two, she's a hypocrite. Number three, she lies. Number four, she indirectly sends her simps to destroy people. Should I keep going? Yeah, I thought so. Man, you're lucky I gotta keep this damn video short. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. Check out my channel. And uh, this leads me to my final question. When is the last time you saw a Pokemon outside of your incognito tab? I'll wait. Uh-huh. I rest my case. I kind of love how in all of this, like, leafy nonsense, Pokemon, who was the one targeted, is the one that's laughing it off and being, like, the biggest champ about all of it. What's kind of crazy is actually witnessing YouTube versus Twitch actually happen. And most specifically, like, over the dumbest takes possible. Over the last 48 hours, I have witnessed probably the dumbest takes from some of the most influential creators regarding copyright use. Literally reaction channeling their way on Twitch and somehow trying to justify that that's somehow fucking trans transformative. It's almost as if, in a weird way of defending themselves, all logic has just been thrown out the fucking window, and we're at this point where, uh, n n nothing really makes sense, I must say. YouTube versus Twitch. I'm just gonna lay it out for you, okay? YouTube, we spend hours working on content, putting content together, uploading it to be fisted by the YouTube algorithm. Twitch, some of y'all can just sit there, have a good time watching set content and not enjoying the delicious fisting of YouTube. What's even funnier than what I just said right there, if you found it funny, was the fact that the people who are most ass blasted out of this are the ones that are the white knight tier 3 defense force that is slapped out of the woodwork. Say anything and these people hunt you down like K-pop stands. Regarding copyright abuse as well, by the way, in the last 48 hours I've heard some of the most influential people make some of the dumbest takes possible. I mean, let's be honest here, YouTube is a far harder harder platform to make to make a to make a quote-unquote living off of you got to write you got to sit you got to edit you got to produce content only to upload it and get fisted right by youtube themselves whereas on twitch you can sit and watch set content without the fisting so clearly let's just be real here one is inherently harder than the other there's nothing wrong with that we all have fucking dream jobs i guess if you wanted to say it that way but goddamn, i have seen some of the most influential takes i mean influential people Make the dumbest takes. In fact, I feel like I might have dropped several brain cells in the last couple days too, and I thought that was a feat not possible. But ladies and gentlemen, yeah, fu fuck, fuck this whole nonsense, dude. Stupidest shit I've ever seen. As the Twitch community likes to say, smooth brains all around. God damn. <laughs> Yo, how's it going, broskies? It's your boy Lofi here, and hi, <laughs> Twitch streamers are so great, am I right? As I'm pretty sure most of you have seen, ever since Papa Leaf dropped his content nuke on Pokemane, there's been a lot of beef between YouTubers and Twitch streamers. Because apparently there's this thing where a lot of Twitch streamers go around making the majority of their money and the majority of their streams off of just watching other YouTubers' videos with literally little to no input. Which, as I'm pretty sure you can see, is uh, a little bit of a problem. And this was Papa Leaf's main argument against Pokemane, the fact that she's boring and doesn't really give any chance transformative input on the videos that she watches on stream. Now, a bunch of Twitch streamers have decided to band together and defend Pokimane because, uh, you know, spoiler alert, they all also do that exact same thing. Like, dude, it's anything negative it, about transformative is subjective. About her. You know, I find this pretty funny coming from the guy whose name came from an accidental cum shot on his keyboard. Like, clearly you don't know anything about copyright laws, my dude. Now, as someone who was a Twitch streamer years before I ever even touched YouTube, I can say that if you're gonna react to somebody's content, if you're gonna watch somebody's content on stream, you need to make it transformative enough to where it becomes your own thing. And also, somebody that does commentary, specifically mostly reaction commentary, saying that something isn't transformative enough is a pretty valid criticism, especially given the evidence provided. This literally feels like Susie Lou 2.0, okay? People big mad that Twitch streamer is making money off content that's not theirs. But oh no, don't you dare insult our queen, Pokimane, and all our other Twitch gods. I swear to god, Twitch streamers are on their own planet. It's like anything that exists outside of Twitch just isn't real. That goes for their viewers too. Like, the majority of the viewers who just watch Twitch and don't really watch a lot of YouTube, they praise them like literal gods and don't want to go out and do their own research and, you know, form their own valid opinions because there's like this hive mindset whenever it comes to Twitch, right? Same 
same can be said for YouTube to a certain extent, but at least when it comes to YouTube culture, people will watch several videos and they'll go out and do their own research a little bit to see what is actually going on. Like this whole thing with Pokimane having a boyfriend or whatever, it's <laughs> it's honestly pretty funny to me. Pokimane's whole image revolves around her being like this anti-Twitch thought, this like big, wholesome, super nice person, but yet what's so wrong with her admitting that she has a boyfriend? That doesn't mean that she has to admit to the world, hey, this is him and show pictures of him all the time. Whenever I had my girlfriend and people should have asked me, hey, are you in a relationship? And I would say, yes, I am. But I never showed her on camera or on Instagram or anything. What's the problem with having your relationship status be known without actually revealing who that person is? I do think that it is kind of scummy to pretend that you're single because you know it'll give you a little bit of extra attention and a little bit of extra money because, you know, people are simps. And you can't tell me that the tier three subs weren't big mad whenever uh, Pokimane's boyfriend situation got exposed, all right? Okay, they were angry. They were mad that their queen wasn't actually a queen. Yeah, who knew that a random person on the internet it has an entire other life outside of a Twitch stream that doesn't revolve around them. You know, unironically, that is a really hard concept for some people to grasp, and it's actually pretty sad. You know, maybe you should try doing this thing called going outside. There's girls out there too. Wow, I know. Crazy. But I guess to them, it's a lot more easier to interact with a woman by just pressing a button and becoming a subscriber instead of having actual social skills. Ayo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Keith, here. I have actually been brought here today on the Optimus channel to talk about a very special person. And this special person... I actually am currently absolutely furious at because for the past year I have had a tier 3 sub on her twitch channel and I've probably donated around $15,000 to her she, she was my queen and also this one time during her stream We actually made some eye contact with each other and I really felt we had something going for each other However, it has come to my attention that she has been seeing another person this whole time Unbelievable old jokes aside though who gives a fuck if some chick who streams her living has a boyfriend It was pretty odd of her to hide the fact that she was dating someone for a while. It is possible that she didn't want to lose her super simps who fork over hundreds of dollars a day to her in hopes that perhaps one day she might actually acknowledge their existence. Or depending on how desperate they are, maybe they think that donating to her stream will make her date them or something. And if that is the case, it is pretty wrong to manipulate your audience like that and to give them false hope that there is a spot open for someone to be your boyfriend. However, if someone is that stupid to think that they could actually date a streamer just because they watch their streams and give them money, they do kind of deserve it. Also, I just wanted to add, Pokemon is goofy as hell for trying to take down people's videos made on her. I'm sure someone else in this video will go more into detail on that, but yeah. That's my time. Pokey stream actually starts in an hour, and I have to go get dressed up for that. Put on my tuxedo. So, yeah. After I made a video on Pokimane, she made me a pretty decent amount of money. And other commentary channels kind of caught on to this. I'm about 99% sure Leafy saw my video and did the same exact thing. Because, you know, she wasn't really under fire until I brought shit up. But it's whatever. Commentary channels, even myself, do this all the time. And I understand, there's a lot of shit to talk about when it comes to Pokimane. But again, I said this in my video. The worst thing about Pokimane is that she has incredibly thin skin. She cannot take criticism to save her life. And it's been proven time and time again that she can't handle other people's opinions. Opinions, so she freaks out and doesn't learn her lesson. Poopy Macaroni also believes that she's above everyone else. And that kind of ties into why she can't take criticism. Oh, how dare these random people online say mean things about me. You know, instead of responding like an adult, in a mature way. She handles critiques and insults like a spastic child. Oh, you made fun of one of my simpy fans? Well, say goodbye to your sponsorships. You're trying to put me in a bad light? Well, how about a big fuck you? Oh look, this random kid is making sexual jokes towards me. Yeah, let's put him in the spotlight and belittle him. Who cares if he's a kid? I'm butthurt. You think someone with millions of followers would be able to take criticism, but... I guess that's not the case. I think she just gets scared when people expose her on her fake persona, so she freaks the fuck out. I have no idea why she would behave this way whenever she receives some sort of insult or some sort of critique, because I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. People say shit to me all the time, I don't really care. Either respond maturely or ignore it. Pretty simple. Today we've got a lot to talk about. First off, Pokimane destroys the haters with facts and logic. She pretty much says that, hey, I turned on my stream without face cam and I got viewers, which proves that it's not the simps that are watching me, it's actual dedicated fans who love my personality. Interesting theory, Pokey, but there, there's a couple of problems with that which uh, I'll be telling you guys. And oh 
Oh my god, uh, I, I've discovered something this video, and uh, it's it's deeply disturbing. Anyways, after that, we're gonna talk about Keemstar versus Pokimane. He pretty much managed to trigger absolutely every single person on Twitter with one simple tweet just baiting the shit out of everybody. Pretty much every single person Pokey knows or Pokey is friends with, and, and just general people on Twitter, have replied to this tweet calling Keem like a misogynist, saying he should be a better example because he has like a daughter and stuff like that and honestly it's pretty obvious that he tweeted this out like solely to get a reaction out of everybody and it a hundred percent worked like these guys played right into his hands and now he has a free drum alert video it it's probably gonna drop in a couple of days and like the tweet is in poor taste by Keem, but that was the point. Like he doesn't think Pokey's actually a two out of ten. He just knows that if he says that, people will be super toxic to him in the replies, and then he can report on them and drama it and look like the good guy. You know, it it's big brain tactics. And honestly, some of the responses to this are so dramatic. Like he put two numbers down. Like uh, dang, uh, it it's not that deep. I really do not like Pokeman. And no, it's not because of her god awful content or even the fact that she blocked me on Twitter. My life is over. I don't like her because of her blatant hypocrisy and manipulation. Pokemon has repeatedly taken a stance on something even though her previous actions completely contradict it. A good example of this is her behavior while in drama with YouTuber It's a Gundam. It's a Gundam made a lighthearted video making fun of Pokemon and her simp fan base. The video was funny and he didn't say anything unreasonable in it. However, Gundam did use a certain four letter word to describe Pokemon that really got on her nerves to say the least. <laughs> The video, or more particularly Gundam's use of a certain word, made Pokimane so angry that she incited her simp army to go hate on the video and she went after one of Gundam's sponsors. And I will say, for this company to sponsor a video that's literally 20 minutes of talking shit about me? You will never see... Dude, your website's so ass it won't even load. But if you ever reach out to me... If I ever see you in my inbox, on site. On fucking site. Now besides this being an insane overreaction on her part, it's also a blatant contradiction of her actions. You see, she got this triggered over somebody calling her a thought, when she does in fact know that there are people that watch her for her body and she's made attempts to appeal to them multiple times. She knowingly acts like a thought but can't handle being called one, like what? And unfortunately her contradictions don't end there, but if we sat here and talked about all of her contradictions, we'd be here longer than the amount of time it takes for Joe Biden to form a coherent sentence. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for my segment on this video. I want to thank Optimus for letting me on the channel. Hopefully Pokemon doesn't go after his sponsors because I called her the thought word. See ya. Some of the creators who defended Pokemon in this situation did so at a detriment to their own channels. I think the most satirical one was XQC, who gave a variety of bad takes almost immediately, which naturally placed eyes on his own content, rather than, you know, successfully defend Pokemon. Transformative is subjective. You transforming something and somebody else, it, they're both transformative in their own way, dude. And if, if sometimes, if you think that it's not, sometimes it's not because it's not transformative, it might be because you don't understand like the culture or the whatever, it, it just, it just kind of how it is. Why are people comparing the content creation and transformation of content on Twitch and YouTube at the same time? It makes no sense. That's because copyright law doesn't change with the platform you're using. Another great react harder take on live content. It's different content in nature. People want to watch what they wouldn't normally watch and hang out with individuals they enjoy. It's why watch parties are becoming so successful. Incoming, but the laws response. Stick to drama, please. I think the reason a lot of people are reluctant to criticize Pokemon's abuse to copyright is that they abuse it as well, and they're trying to normalize stealing content. This guy has an entire channel dedicated to reposting unclipped reactions that compete with the video he's reacting to. I wonder why he wasn't so vocal about Pokemon even on stream and stealing content. I'm not I'm like victim victor, but I look at the trends, okay? I look at comments on on other on platforms like Twitter, like Reddit, dude. Okay, there was some hate on Fitmeister. I look at his channel. Motherfucker, is four hour Andy react Roberto! Why do I get all the fucking hate from that shit? When I do one hour a half a day, tops! Pokemon, I'm not sure why you did this to me. 
thousands of dollars I spent on stream. You even said my name multiple times. We had a connection, Pokey. Where'd it go? Think about it, Pokey. We, we could have been together. I remember when I found your Twitch channel. You bent your ass over at the perfect angle. I didn't really know what to think. I had to click on the dono link. Click, click. Make the dono message complimentarize too. Let her know that she's my queen, nobody else. Ooh. Gotta keep donating till she says my name. As a simp, I had to do one thing. I had to donate, 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 donate. I had to donate, 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 donate. I had to donate, 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 donate. I had to donate, 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 donate. I had to donate all my unemployment funds to Pokey. I had to donate my whole savings account to my queen. I had to donate, donate, also get that tier three sub. Simping for Pokey, you know I get that tier three. I spent my mother's retirement fund on a Pokemon donation. Do I regret it? No. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in the era of perpetual offendedness. I already kind of know that, where, I mean, you can't say or do anything without somebody getting upset, and it gets to ridiculous points already, but this is by far one of just the weirdest things I've ever seen when it comes down to this kind of thing, because, like, how can you even be upset like this over this kind of situation? I, I feel like this is something that happens to anybody in this kind of situation, where, like, you'll just be driving and some dude on the road who just, I don't know, he's impatient or whatever, is trying to get around you, or he's, like, tailing you real hard, and you you know, you get flipped off or something. I, I feel like that happens to everybody, right? I don't think it's that big of a deal. But apparently, it's such a big deal to some people that not only do they film themselves crying to Snapchat about it, but they get their parents to go basically on a manhunt for this person to try and show them what's up. So... Uh, I don't know how to really preface this entire thing by just, I guess, just telling you guys maybe, don't be such asses about everything. I mean, I get it, right? Like, yeah, you shouldn't get flipped off and everything. I understand. That person was in the wrong. However, filming yourself crying for Snapchat, what, what does that gain you? You know what I mean? What, people are supposed to feel bad for you because somebody flipped you off while you were driving down the road? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't feel bad for this person. I don't feel bad for people who cry over shit like that. I, I don't think it's something to even be that upset over. But with that being said, I don't know. Let's just go ahead and take a dive right on into this one, fellas. Okay, you don't have to. I, yes, I did. <laughs> oh, that's Alright, so essentially, this girl got flipped off while driving down the road or whatever, and instead of, you know, just ignoring it like a normal human being, just going about your day, she, I guess, cried and went home and told her mom about it, and her mom has decided she's gonna go try and fucking hunt the person down, like, I don't know, like cavemen were hunting woolly mammoths back in the early days of man, I don't know. It's insane. Like, just the concept behind it, like, just picture that, right? Imagine you're the mom, and, you know, your kid comes home, oh, mom, I got flipped off while driving down the road she's just upset right in tears how do you then respond by going oh okay he flipped you off I'm gonna go find out who it was by, I don't know, driving around town and hoping that I see them. Dude's probably at Popeye's eating a chicken sandwich having a good day while you're out here acting like a maniac driving down the road trying to find out who it was. Like, you're never gonna find this person. Even if she gave you a description of who it was, like, they're going somewhere very obviously. What, you're gonna drive around for hours and look at all the houses and the stores and stuff in the city? No. And if you do, at that point, you are blatantly worse than the person who actually did anything in the first place. I mean, just kind of consider that, right? Which is worse? You, someone flips you off while you're driving down the road, which honestly is not that big of a deal, or someone going on a legitimate manhunt through the city to try and find out who it was. And what are you going to do when you find him, right? Like, are you going to beat his ass? Yeah, I'm sure mom here was going to throw hands with this dude. She probably couldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. But anyway, she was going to hit him with the Karen special. She was going to ask for the manager and yell at him really loudly. <laughs> but I was literally just driving home from babysitting <laughs> and I was going the speed limit and then he literally just goes like this to me and I was like what? Yeah this is what I'm saying this, this is beyond belief for me right like how in the fuck 
are you so soft that this actually gets to you, right? I feel like this is almost like a meme, right? Because I, I hear all the time from like older people like, oh, your generation's a bunch of snowflakes. Oh, your generation can't handle shit. You guys get upset over the littlest things. I'm starting to believe that. Like there is no reason that you are this old crying about something like this. If you were like an eight year old child, I'd be like, yeah, over the top, but I can understand a little bit more. You are old enough to drive. You are old enough to have a fucking job. You apparently babysit. And someone flipping you off was just the, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. And then your parents, or your mom at least, feeds into this by actually going to solve your problem for you. Or saying she's going to go solve your problem for you. If I were her, I would just drive around the block and laugh at you about how disappointing you were, but probably go dap the dude up for flipping you off and shit, but you are too old to be acting this way. You know, I, I don't understand how this even got to your feelings this badly. It's a fucking middle finger. Like, who hasn't been flipped off in their lifetime, right? Like, this is the kind of behavior I would have expected in, like, third grade when some kid flipped another kid off and they got upset or something. You know, I'm maybe. We probably all still would have laughed at him. But there is no way you would ever catch me at age, what, 16, 17, crying because I was flipped off. And I know this is a little off topic and whatnot, but bro, I say this a lot. Kids today would not survive Modern Warfare 2 game chat. It just simply wouldn't happen. Anyone who played any of those like older Call of Duty games or like Halo back in the day, anything like that, dude, you've heard way too much, right? You've heard the worst things possible said in those chats. You'd probably laugh at somebody for flipping you off. At least I would. That, that's probably the best way you can handle it. He flips you off and gets all mad. Just start laughing. Just, you know, be extra about it. Just ha ha ha. Just like, make sure he knows you're laughing at him. That's the best way to get him back, because that probably actually would upset him. Instead, you fucking broke down and started crying. Like, oh my god, man. I'm so mean and like, uncalled for. And I don't know why I'm so upset. Oh, it's so mean. It's like so un unnecessary. It's just so mean. Yeah, he, he wasn't trying to be nice to you. I don't I don't know if you for some reason thought that. I, I he he wasn't trying to be nice. He wasn't, you know, flipping you off to say, Oh hey, you have a great day. I'm a big fan of you. No. He was flipping you off because of whatever. Apparently you were going the speed limit. And I'm starting to think at this point, even though I know people do act stupid over people actually driving correctly. I'm starting to believe by this video that this guy probably had a pretty justifiable reason to flip you off. I can't imagine that you were actually driving correctly if this is how you act. I mean, holy shit, right? This whole thing is just, it's embarrassing to watch on your behalf because now, first off, this is what you're known for on the entire internet, is being that girl who cried because someone flipped her off and then went on, oh, it's so mean, oh, it's so unnecessary, it's uncalled for. I mean, shit, once again, he wasn't trying to be nice, right? I don't, I don't get how this is like the worst thing that could have happened to you, right? To set you off the edge this badly. You know, your life has to be pretty goddamn good for this to be an actual problem in your life. For this to be like the straw that broke the camel's back once again, your life has to be pretty good. Because anyone who's facing like legit problems in their life, like they, I don't know, they got all kinds of different stuff going on, the last thing that would upset them is probably someone flipping them off. And I'm pretty sure that their moms wouldn't be out trying to fucking hunt the person down like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Like, I kind of feel bad for you, but not because you got flipped off, but because... You're, what, 16, 17, something like that, and your parents are so easy on you that instead of telling you to just grow the fuck up and stop being a baby about this, they instead decided that they were going to go try and hunt somebody down for it. For how dare they be mean to my precious little daughter, who's almost an adult, who can almost vote. I mean, your life's got to be pretty goddamn good, you know? So with that being said, uh, I'm not going to harp on it too much longer. I think everyone kind of understands the point here. Don't be an asshole. I get that. But also, don't be like this. This is embarrassing and it's ridiculous. And in reality, you make the rest of us look bad when you do this because you can't handle very basic things. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at Subdoptimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below for fresh official Optimus merch. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus crying over me getting flipped off and signing. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to yet another video here on the channel. And today, we're going to be talking about Area 51, which is, of course, one of the most infamous American Air Force bases in history, and how it's apparently about to get raided by hundreds of thousands of people off the internet, and how, well, apparently the plans for this raid have gone viral as a meme on the internet. 
how the media has reacted to this, of course, you know, some of them understanding that it's just a joke, some of them, I guess, not really getting that it's a joke, wondering whether or not the US government is responding to this in the way that I think they, they would understand this, and of course, you know, looking over the game plan itself, and, you know, looking at it from, I would say, a military genius myself, having played many games of Civilization, I, you know, I've played so much Civilization over my time, I'm gonna take a look at the plan, and I'm gonna go ahead and give my opinion on it. Now, if you don't live in the United States, you might not know what Area 51 is, or you might. I mean, it is one of the biggest pieces, I guess, of history in, like, UFO history, because it is the location that they supposedly took the UFO from the w Roswell crash, I think it was. And apparently the U.S. government has been holding aliens there and UFOs there for decades, pretty much since the 40s and maybe even before that. Area 51 has been a very secretive place for the U.S. government for a long time. And even to this day, it's still a pretty secretive place. Area 51 is actually just a remote detachment of Edwards Air Force Base. It's within the Nevada Test and Training Range. The actual name of this facility is the Homie Airport, and it's also called Groom Lake. The reason that it's called Area 51 is because this name was given to it by the CIA in a document from the Vietnam War. The facility has also been called Dreamland and Paradise Ranch, both names that I actually like way more than any other name that we've heard before. We don't really know what goes on there, however, based on evidence, we think that it probably has a lot to do with testing experimental aircraft and weapon systems. But due to all of its significance, really, in UFO fo folklore and stuff, I mean, it became a pretty big meme, and people basically started this big online thing on Facebook to quote-unquote raid Area 51. So very recently on Facebook, this event popped up, and it has gained a very widespread notoriety, I guess you could say, as even the mainstream media has picked up on it, and it has gained over 400,000 signatures, which is pretty crazy. Most Facebook events don't ever really garner that much popularity, and it is Storm Area 51, they can't stop all of us. It is scheduled for Friday, September 20th at 3 a.m., 6 a.m., well, 2, 6 a.m. local time at Area 51 in the Amargosa Valley of New N Nevada. Are you serious? Nevada. Apparently, the big spectacle that people are going to be raiding Area 51 for is to quote-unquote see them aliens. They want to see them aliens, folks. And you know what? I don't necessarily blame them. I would love to see them aliens, too. So, you know, I think I might be going to Area 51 as well. You know what? Let's do an Optimus fan meetup at Area 51. You know, for legal reasons, I should probably say that's just a joke. The U.S. government will most likely catch wind of me saying that. Please do not show up at Area 51. It is restricted government area. They do have authorization to use deadly force there. If you do trespass on the grounds, they do have contracted military force there, and they will kill you. Do not go there. 428,000 people are listed as interested in going, which really tallies the number of people who potentially have responded to going to this event, near a million people. Attendees will supposedly meet at a nearby quote-unquote tourist attraction where they will coordinate their entry. One of the major parts of their plan here is to quote-unquote Naruto run. Now, if you don't know what Naruto running is, it was basically what the weird kid in middle school would do when they wanted to get to the cafeteria faster than everybody else. You know how normal people would walk in the hallway? You know, you would just walk to your class. And then there was that kid who always claimed that they got bullied for watching anime, but they didn't actually get bullied for watching anime. They got bullied because they would, like, lean forward like Sonic with their arms at a 90-degree angle behind them, and they would sprint in front of them while screaming as loudly as possible like they had something wrong with them. That is what we consider the Naruto or Naruto run. Well, apparently, if you do that run, you can move faster than their bullets. Now, obviously, this is a joke. You cannot move faster than their bullets. Bullets travel extremely fast. They're making a joke. This whole event is a joke. At least it's supposed to be. They're not actually, well, at least intending on showing up to this event. The vast majority of people, from what I understand, are not actually planning on going to Area 51 and are not planning to, you know, trespass on federal property, military grounds, very secretive area with, you know, authorization to use deadly force, and Naruto run to move faster than their bullets to quote-unquote see the aliens. Now, the media caught wind of this because, of course, this whole thing blew up and, you know, started writing a bunch of articles on it, and, you know, some of them caught wind of that. You know how the media is. The media is a very, you know, special group of people. 
Some of them understand the internet and its culture, some of them don't. Old people are extremely weird, and I love them for that, because some of them, they understand the youngsters. They're like, okay, they're making a joke, they're not being serious. They understand we're not actually going to try and overrun a military base, because that's a very stupid idea. You know, the military's not really going to be cool with a million people trying to overrun a military base. They would actually try to do something about that. But of course, then there's the other ones who, you know, they don't actually include that, hey, they were joking about this, they're not being serious. The only thing anyone will see after storming Area 51 will be God or the inside of a jail cell. How many of them geeks do you think a Moab would chill at nice? Cluster munitions would be nice too, says base commander. Will be interesting to see if the left nut media picks up and pushes it to see if they can make news with it. Now I can't imagine how out of touch you would have to be to believe like, well, there's a million people online who, well, you know what, actually I can't even say that because we do live in 2019, people really do some pretty stupid things. I, I wouldn't be surprised if people actually show up. The thing is, is online, a lot of this stuff does start as a joke. The truth is, you know, people start jokes all the time, like the Tide Pod challenge. That stuff, I feel like, all starts as jokes. You know, people are like, hey, this Tide Pod, you know, kind of looks like candy. You know, people are blatantly joking around, they're not being serious, but then you always really do have that one idiot who's just actually stupid, who really goes through with it, you know? And I mean, almost a million people, I, I guess Darwin really could pick a couple out of that whole basket of people there. I, I guess somebody might try it. I mean, they don't play no games there, you know, Gator don't play no shit here. This is, you know, legitimate. This is Area 51, this isn't some little mall cop situation. If you're being serious about showing up at Area 51, I, I can't stop you, but all I can say is please don't be stupid. Don't go to Area 51, I mean, you're obviously not the brightest of the bunch, but it just, you know... Don't vote, please. So now on to the game plan, because I feel like the game plan is pretty decent, but I think like, I think it could honestly use a little bit of work, because we're talking about seeing them aliens, but here's the problem, because I think, especially when they call in backup, we're not going to get the whole world to see the aliens. We might lose too many in casualties here. I've played too much Civ. I know what it's like to lose your units when you're sieging a city here. Now... When looking at this map, you see the Kyles with the monster energy buff, plus 10 berserk. Now, I'm gonna say we need to add a plus 5 def- or a plus 5 attack, actually, with the drywall buff, okay? The Kyles are gonna push in on the front, okay, with the rock throwers, are also gonna move in, and I believe they're going to be attacking at the inevitable resistance. They're going to be attacking the guards, annoying them from a range with rocks, while the Kyles, of course, you know, do their thing. They're gonna be mad off the monster. They're gonna have another buff with my added drywall bonus. The Naruto runners are gonna hit the flanks. Now, I think this is a good move. They're gonna come around the guards and hit the sides. Now, I'm gonna add in the clout chasers with their cameras here. Now, the clout chasers with their cameras are gonna add a very unique dynamic to this whole plan. I'm gonna call this our five-point plan here. We're gonna drop in this mountain range right behind Area 51 here are clout chasers with cameras. They're gonna push in here off the west side, I believe, here of this base in from the mountains. They're gonna sneak in and they're gonna infiltrate in secrecy and try and take pictures and videos of the aliens in case we lose all of our units and they're gonna quickly upload the footage onto the internet. That way it can start being virally shared. Clout chasers are uniquely known for their ability to get attention online with their antics. This is foolproof. Now here is a very uni unique way that we can really destroy any responding units and try and prevent any really, you know, good way of them destroying us from the outside. Now, of course, when we raid the facility, they're going to try and call for any backup from any nearby units. They're going to try and get, you know, fighter jets to strike the force and everything. They're, they're going to really try and take us out. So we're going to call in the Hype Beasts, okay? Now, what, what this basically is, we're going to have Supreme wearing, Yeezy wearing, Hype Beasts on the ground, probably about 500 of them, and we're going to load them up with these Supreme money shooting, like little uh, money guns. And what these do is basically when they like fly F-16s and bombers over us, they can shoot those down. And any time that they try to fly any forces in on us, we can basically resist against any incoming American government forces. And we can really, I guess, 
eliminate any oncoming strikes and really we can prevent casualties to the Naruto runners, the Clout Chasers, the Rock Throwers, the Kyles, and also the Hype Beasts. I think that my five point plan builds upon this plan. I think overall it's going to stop any real chance of us losing this and I think we actually walk away with a better chance of seeing them aliens and all living. Just a disclaimer before I leave, none of this is real. US government, please do not assassinate me in my sleep tonight. I'm not really going to show up at Area 51. I'm going to go to bed tonight at my house and I'm going to wake up tomorrow with no plans of going there and uh, make a YouTube video tomorrow. And uh, if you're watching this, don't show up at Area 51. If you do, I'm not liable for your actions. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on my channel. Follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on over there as well. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus. Seeing them aliens at Area 51 and signing out. I learned how to fucking shoot a gun, you fucking riot shield. What else am I gonna do? Oh, riot shield. shield! I'm a pussy that use riot shield! Oh, oh I, I, I'm a pussy. What, what, what do you want me to use? Faggot. You tell Look me what you want me to use. Fast prestige, you fucking faggot. Tell me what it's fucking is, huh? Today I want to take you guys on a ride down that nostalgia train because I think this is a topic that we should talk about. Now, we live in a world today that I would say is pretty safe, okay? Nobody's allowed to say anything that is deemed offensive, right? Everyone throws their arms up in rage and fear anytime anything bad is said. You pretty much have to apologize for literally everything. You can't say anything anymore. Everyone gets offended over the most stupid shit. But you know, my generation, we lived through something called Xbox Game Chat. Now, I want you to imagine if you never experienced anything like this. I want you to imagine the most horrendous, offensive things that could be said today. And I want you to multiply that by about 7,000. Because this shit is unrivaled. Y'all literally will get offended over getting called stupid and cry. You get you get called just so, the most random name in the world and kids today will break down and cry. But these game chats, man, these turned boys into men. And if you never experienced it, you just won't understand. Now there is a very specific game franchise that I hold very close to myself that had just the worst. And I mean the worst game chats. Call of Duty game chats were just AIDS, to say it at best, were just the worst. I learned every racial slur, every homophobic slur, every insult, every your mom joke, everything, just through those chats. I went into these game chats as a young boy, and I came out a seasoned veteran. Honestly, like, if you ever were in a MW2, Black Ops 1, MW3, Black Ops 2 game chat, you deserve a veteran's discount. And even then, even when these things were just the most toxic chats in the world, they were still better than party chat. I mean, I have been in the witnessing count of so many horrible game chats. I have heard the worst shit been said to other people. I have heard death threats. I have heard getting, you know, I'll boot you offline. I have heard threats to slaughter families. I have heard threats to shoot schools up. I've heard threats for pretty much everything, every name, ever. At this point, I feel like the juggernaut from MW3, you know, it's just, it's wild. But the great thing about these chats is that even though they, they were toxic, the, a lot of mean things were said in them, it forced you to be a part of that community, you know? You had to interact with your teammates. You had to actually play the game together, especially, and I'm talking primarily about Call of Duty because this is where I experienced a lot of it. In modes like Search and Destroy, you were in there with all these other players and anytime something happened, anything, if someone made, you know, the greatest play of all time, you heard everyone go stupid. If you saw someone hit a clip, you heard everyone go stupid. If a teammate didn't clutch up a 1v2 in search or something, you made sure that they knew about it. The whole party did. Everyone made sure that player was lambasted. And you know what? That put a lot more emotion into the game. And that put a lot more passion into it. Because if I'm in that 1v2 situation and all my teammates are dead, I'm clutching up. Because I'm not trying to get called 
every name in the book when I'm killed. Kids today have this safety on them, okay? They can just sit in party chat with like three friends, never have to interact with another person in voice chat. And that sucks. And I wish that games would start forcing you to use game chat again because it makes you interact. A lot of the fun of these older Call of Duty games is just the fact that you don't know what's gonna happen in voice chat. You can join in a lobby and the har most harsh argument of all time is going on right there in front of you. And you have a front row seat to the funniest shit you're gonna see in days. In days. But you also might meet some really great people too. I have met so many awesome friends and, you know, other people to play games with through these voice chats. Believe it or not, not everybody was toxic in those things. And they made the game better because, like I said, not only did you might, you might have witnessed the funniest thing ever, you might have just gone stupid when one of these crazy clips gets hit. You might meet new friends, but at the end of the day, you know, you actually had to talk to someone who wasn't one of the three people you play with on a daily basis. And it toughened a lot of us up, man. I, like I said, I was really young when I started getting into these games. I was 10 years old when I started really getting into online Call of Duty and Black Ops 1. I can't imagine how much of a bitch I would be if I wasn't just bullied in these games. By grown men. By grown men across the world. Just bullying the shit out of me. If that never happened, I can't imagine what I'd be today. And I think that's a lot of the problem with these newer kids playing Fortnite and shit. They don't get bullied like that, you know? They don't just get these just, oh, I can't even describe what they are. They're not even insults. They go beyond that. These wars pretty much waged on them. And they're just softer, man. This new generation's soft. And primarily with the newer generation of consoles, game chat has just started to die. And that's honestly a shame. And not only because you just don't see all these funny arguments or these classic clips where people are going stupid in the backgrounds anymore. It's not always because of that. It's because when I look back on it, man, these newer age kids, they're just never going to have the great childhoods that I had. And I know that this is said all the time by something from every generation. Like, my parents always tell me, Oh, you kids aren't ever going to know about that old classic NES era and stuff where your friends came over and sat on the couch and you guys played. You guys won't know shit about those arcade cabinets and stuff, right? I think, honestly, our generation, primarily if you're between, like, the ages of 18 and 25, maybe older than that even, who experienced that real golden age of game chat, I think we can all agree that just looking back on all of it, it's something that I don't want kids in the future and future players to miss out on. And there's just so much benefit to having it. And the fact that it's being shuttered for these safe little party chats where no one's feelings can get hurt unless you invite someone in who can hurt your feelings is just a shame. And I, th I think it's sad that we live in a world where everyone gets so offended over everything. The beauty of Black Ops 1 and Modern Warfare 2 and all these old Call of Duty games and all these old games during this golden era of my childhood is that you could legitimately just get on and have fun. And a big part of that is due to those game chats, man. And this is all only eight to five years ago. That's what's crazy to think back on. It's been that long since we played Black Ops 2 in middle school and just shit-talked each other into oblivion, bullied each other into tears over sniper clips, over, you know, stats in Call of Duty. But at the same time, so many great childhood memories have been made. A great part of a lot of these Call of Duty sniping montages from back then is that you could actually hear the reactions and I know not many, you know, sniping clips and stuff like that are coming out nowadays. And teams like FaZe Clan and stuff have all gone and just went to vlogging and stuff like that. But when you watch those old montages and you see these insane clips, you hear everyone in the lobby screaming and going stupid. And then those funny clips of just everyone calling each other just horrible names. While as a newer gamer, you might listen to that and think, wow, that just sounds shitty. It really wasn't. It really wasn't a bad time. And as time has passed, I think that all of these newer features have kind of spoiled a lot of players. So, why should we ever think back on these times as just these great times, if so much bad things were said? Because back then, everybody could hear something bad, and they wouldn't let it get to them to that, you know, degree, that it actually burned them up inside. Back then, people had thick skin. We weren't little bitches about everything. We didn't let the, just the most tame words offend us. And I don't mean to draw any weird conclusion out of this, 
but it doesn't it seem weird that as game chat finally disappears from gaming, everyone just, you know, forgets that jokes are allowed and everyone just gets more and more offended as time goes on over everything. I mean, even in CSGO, a lot of what is said is just so tame compared to all of this horrible stuff that we heard on Call of Duty back in that golden era, man. And now, all you hear, oh my god, CSGO chat is the most toxic thing ever, it's horrible. I'm just telling you, man, if you lived through MW2 chat lobbies, through Call of Duty chat lobbies, through those Halo chat lobbies, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. It almost, you know, makes me want to go back. I just want to go back just for a day, just to experience how great that was as a time period in my life. All the memories that I made with all of these great friends through chat lobbies in Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, MW3, you know, these were the games, man. Even MW2 to an extent, just, oh my goodness. If you're a young kid listening to this, you just will never get it because you're just never gonna be in that time era. And this is one of those few things I can look back on and say, wow, why did we ever get rid of this? Anyways, thank you guys for listening to me just ramble on about, you know, video game chat lobbies for the last, I don't know how long. Uh, if you did enjoy, and you should probably leave a like if you did, also make sure to leave a like if you survived the MW2 chat lobby. Subscribe down below for more content. Follow me on Twitter at SubTheOptimus. Join that Discord down below, and until my next video, guys, this is Optimus, going into game chat. So I saw some shit on Twitter. This is just ridiculous, honestly. I don't even understand why in the year 2018 we have shit like this going down, but uh, it it's ridiculous, man. So we all know about manspreading and this stupid movement against it. Now, I, I just want to say for the record, I understand 100% if, like, you're on a train and this dude is sitting here literally with his legs pretty much at, like, a fucking 180 looking like he's doing the splits or something in a very awkward position. I get that. But you have to remember that, number one, most dudes aren't taking it even close to that far. And number two, we okay, so the whole thing about manspreading is that you gotta, you just gotta understand that dudes, we got meat. When I sit down, I have these sensitive genitalia called my penis and my balls that dangle from betwixt my legs. And when I sit down, I just want to point out it is not very comfortable when you sit on the boys, you know what I'm saying? Having your balls come together like a Venn diagram is not the most comfortable feeling in the fucking world. I just, for the women out there who, who have this whole hate train against men spreading their legs a little bit when they sit down, number one, it's fucking stupid to get mad over. Number two, you kinda gotta realize that human anatomy doesn't really allow for dudes to just crunch their legs together like that naturally, and I'm just, just gonna throw this out here. If a dude can do that, chances are he's got some mini meat dangling, you know? So there's a huge hate train, especially within the feminist community, against dudes making sure they don't smash their twigs and berries together and, you know, just saving themselves from that pain. Now, for most normal people, you can think about the fact that dudes, like I said, we got our meat dangling down there and we don't really want it all smushed together, so we spread our legs a little bit when we sit down. Usually not too far. Like I said, I can understand if people are getting mad that dudes got their legs fucking doing the splits on the seats and stuff like that. That's a bit different, but when you see what I'm about to show you, you're gonna quickly realize that there is no man in this video who is encroaching on other people's, like, personal space. Except for the first dude. I will say, the first guy, yeah, probably a little bit. These women are all smushed up and shit with their purses in their lap. This fool's got his legs a bit open too far. But get this, do you think that the appropriate response, especially by this person who is doing this, was ever taken, which would be to walk up to him and politely ask, hey sir, can you please move your legs a little closer together so, you know, I can sit down and have my own personal space? Can you please not have your legs spread so far? There's a pretty good chance that that dude would have been like, oh yeah, I apologize, and he would have sat up a little bit more normally. But this Russian student does not do that. In fact, she thinks that you should take it a step farther and throw harsh chemicals in the crotches of men on trains to stop their man spreading. I am being 100% serious when I say that. I'm not joking around when I say that at all. So this activist, this student, is literally committing assault with a chemical, may I add, against people on the train because she doesn't like how they're sitting. Her name is Anna Dovgayaluk? something i she's a russian activist and what i don't understand is that she has been photographed and videotaped multiple times committing crimes against people literally committing assault with a chemical 
A very dangerous chemical at that against the most sensitive spot on a male's body literally just because she doesn't like the way they're sitting. They know her name. They know enough to prosecute her, yet nothing is being done. She has not been arrested. She is literally just walking through trains doing this shit. Now, I want to take a minute for you guys to kind of think about if the roles were reversed, how would this end up? Imagine a dude was walking around on the trains with a bottle of bleach diluted with a little bit of water, was walking up to women on the train, and was literally throwing this chemical on their fucking crotch. How do you think that this being videotaped and put out in, in actually, like, prominent media, the site that I saw this, or the Twitter page that I saw this at, has over 52,000 followers. And it's still making its rounds on Twitter. Imagine if a man did that. Can, can you see there ever being a situation in which the media reported it and did not make this man a monster? In which people were not so infuriated, in, in which, actually, he wasn't even fucking arrested. There is virtually no situation that I can think of in which that would happen, and people would be like, you know what, this is the appropriate response. And to be fair, the vo the wide majority of reaction I've seen to this has been very negative. So this woman is fighting something that men naturally do to protect their genitalia, for whatever reason, because she just doesn't like the way it looks. I will say that, like I said, this dude reading the book here in red, he definitely was taking it a bit far. Probably should have scaled that back, he's being kind of a douche, I agree. But is the appropriate reaction really to throw bleach on his fucking nuts? She's targeting men who get too comfortable in public with bleach. Yep, that, that's a great idea. She She's really teaching them a lesson. So guys, uh, next time I get on the city bus and I see a woman who has put her purse on the seat beside her and is virtually just taking up two or more seats, I got this bottle of bleach that I carry around with me and I'm just gonna fucking throw it right on her tits. Just because I can. Because apparently it's just, that's the right thing to do. I'm just gonna go target woman spreading. And if you think about it, quote unquote woman spreading with putting their bag on the seat next to them or somewhere where it's just inconvenient for men is a lot less natural and truly is a lot less necessary than manspreading is. I mean, come on now. Manspreading is literally protecting a part of the body. Woman spreading is just a woman putting her bag on the seat because she can, you know? She is tired of the gender aggression shown by men in public. By, by protecting a, you know pretty sensitive, important part of their body. Not really inconveniencing anybody who doesn't, you know, except for the people who literally get on the train just to find it. Because let's be honest, she is not getting on the train to do anything but travel and literally find people to assault with a chemical. And honestly, how fucking, how much of a loser do you have to be to cause something literally so non-aggressive, gender aggression. It would be gender aggression if he was taking his goddamn man-spreaded nuts and was dipping them in your face on the train, you know? That would be gender aggression. These men are literally posing zero harm to anybody on the train. The only person committing quote-unquote gender aggression is the woman who is targeting men with a fucking chemical and assaulting them. That's the only gender aggression I can think of happening on that bus, or on that train, or literally on any form of public transit that something like this happens on. It leaves a nasty shame mark on the spreader's crotch and literally ruins somebody's property and literally puts the most sensitive part of their body in actual danger with a chemical. Congratulations, you're really showing those men that you're willing to commit a felony because, you know, I don't like what you're doing on the train. Instead of legitimately trying to be a nice person and actually fixing the issue in a very, you know, civil way, you have turned to one of the worst ways I can think of possibly to actually fix the problem. Congratulations, you're a great person. Many people claim that her acts are aggressive, but no commuters have pressed charges against her thus far. Therefore, this isn't an aggressive move. Throwing a toxic chemical in someone's lap diluted with water because you don't like how they're sitting on the train, that's not aggressive at all. You know what's really aggressive? The fact that those men are protecting their balls by not sitting on top of them. That's the real problem, right? The fact that nobody has pressed charges against her is actually very shocking. And what's more shocking is the fact that nobody has punched her so hard her jaw came loose.
People are claiming that her actions are staged, but Russian men might think twice before spreading out. Yeah, you know what? Maybe they will think twice before spreading out because there's a chance that this psychopath might show up with a bottle of bleach and water and throw it in their lap. So as you could see in that video, they basically glorified the action, you know? They might think twice before, you know, spreading out. Lest they want to be literally almost chemically castrated with the same thing you clean your pool with. You know, that's ridiculous. What kind of world do we live in where if you sit in an inconvenient way on the bus to literally, like, three people, you can be literally assaulted? And I know I keep repeating that, but that, that's literally the whole point. I can't imagine what legitimately goes through somebody's head that makes them think, I don't like the way that person is sitting, let me now throw literally chemicals in their lap. The fact that the police have not launched an investigation, nobody has pressed charges, and more luckily for her, nobody has literally fucked her up. I've seen people fight for much more insignificant things than being literally assaulted with chemicals. I've seen people fist fight over lunch seats. I've seen people fist fight over parking spots. I, but to, to see this is even more shocking. You are not a normal person if you think that it is acceptable to throw chemicals on people that you don't like the way they sit. You know, that's just, it's insane. The issue with manspreading is a non-issue. If we're being really honest, if you think that in our society, a big problem is men sitting with their legs a little bit open, if you think that's a legitimate problem, your life is literally probably too good. Because I can't imagine just having so little to worry about that I can get on the train and, and just notice how a man is sitting with his legs not literally crunched until his balls are popping in his sack, you know? I just can't imagine living that sheltered my entire life. It's ridiculous. And the fact that this has even become an issue, let alone it is now resulting in destruction of property, assault with a chemical, and people like this actively, you know, promoting this as something that would make them think twice is insane. We literally live in a society. Thank you guys for watching. Don't assault people with chemicals. Man spreading is not a real issue. Find something to legitimately worry about. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here. This video is a little bit off the wall, but honestly, this just kind of pisses me off. I'm not even gonna lie. This is just ridiculous. Follow me on Twitter at Subdoptimus. Join the Discord down below, and until my next video, guys, this is Optimus protecting his nuts from chemicals and signing off.